Um, good evening, everyone. Today is Tuesday, April 25th, um, 2023. It's about 7.30 p.m. This is a Planning and Zoning um, Commission public hearing and general meeting. We are here in Town Hall in room 206. Um, first, we're going to start with the public hearing tonight, then get into the general meeting items. Uh, before we get started with the public hearing, I want to get a motion to rejigger or reorder the um, um, the agenda. Adam makes a motion, Amy makes a second. Yeah. We're going to move um, item number, where is it? I call it item number five, um, which is the fifth one on here, Coastal Site Plan Review number 375, up to the first item. And so I'm going to read that one to us now. Coastal Site Plan Review number 375, <coughs> Land Filling and Regrading Application number 550, WZ3, 2002, Trust FOB, M period, J period, Ziegler at 95 Long Neck Point Road. The proposal is to construct a new four bedroom single family dwelling on a now vacant lot, construction of a new driveway, a porch and a pool and perform related site development activities within a regulated area, including the regrading of the property and installation of stormwater management. Uh, the 1.41 plus minus acre subject property is located on the east side of Long Neck Point, approximately 430 feet south of its intersection with Ziggy's Way, and is shown on assessor's map number 58 as lot 1-Q in the R1 residential zone. Chairman, what do we got? Uh, Fred Donight and I uh, earlier this evening spoke with Robert Sandolo of SE Minor, who's here this evening, and he agreed that he's going to continue the hearing uh, to, you can come up uh, right over here, Robert, uh, to June 6, which would allow him and his team to reconfigure the plans a little bit and come back to the commission on June 6. We need an extension of time to get to that Tuesday, June 6th date at 7.30. Mr. Sandolo. Hi, good Welcome evening. Your name for the record over there. Robert Sandolo from SE Minor, licensed uh, engineer, um, engineer of record on the project. Um, it has come to our attention that uh, the setbacks on the original subdivision map are more restrictive than the R1 zone, so we do need to rework the house footprint a bit to get it to work. So we would like to grant an extension. Okay, that's fine. We're, we're gonna you're gonna push you back, and then you're gonna grant us an extension of yeah. So uh, Mr. Sandillo has has to grant an extension of time to get us to Tuesday, June six, seven thirty p.m. in this room, and we'll take it from there. Okay, on, on page I think it's page three of your submission on your big packet. You have a, um, a it looks like a survey. I'm gonna pull that right quick. If you could, uh, I'm gonna call it. It's, yeah, it's page number three. Right. If you could put the required building zoning envelope on that, we will. that would be great. And then in this zoning text box on page two, where it says existing proposed um, required, add the column there for what's required by the subdivision. Sure thing. No problem. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank the motion that you did. Yes, it was. Thank do, you. do we need to have a motion to? Nope. Yeah. Nope. To go back in order. Yeah. We no, that was too right. Now we're going to do. We're going to read aloud one fourteen. And note that that's one fourteen. Yeah. Fourteen growth. No, nope, one fourteen. Um, five miles. Five miles. Not right. going ahead. Oh, you want to read that one? Okay. And then get what that one other one. Okay. Do you want that one open? Or no. 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 Okay, the next item we're going to read on the agenda is the third one down. It's a so, um, sorry, excuse me. Coastal site plan view review number 374, flood stem prevention application number 179A, land filling and regrading application number 549, Mark and Sasha Cohen at 114 Five Mile River Road. What are we going to do with that? That's, that item is not going to go ahead tonight. The applicant has agreed to extension of time to open the hearing. So, uh, Fred, do we have a certain date certain, or we're going to re-notice everyone if my recollection serves? Uh, we will re-notice everyone. So it'll likely be a date in June, but as of now, um, we don't have uh, a date nailed down for that. 
Okay. okay. So the hearing's not going to be open tonight. So the hearing's not open. Okay. So people in the audience or watching on TV, if you're here for 114 Five Mile River Road, we're going to pass on that one tonight. And if you're also here for 95 Long Neck Point uh, Road, we're going to pass on that one for tonight. Um, so if you're here for that, you're welcome to go home. Hey, somebody's here for that. All right, here we go. Back to the top of the agenda. The first item we're going to work on is going to be business site plan application number 234B, special permit application number 236A, <coughs> Grove Street Plaza LLC, <coughs> Harvest Restaurant Group at 14 Grove Street. Proposal to establish a new 1,371 plus minus square foot full service restaurant in the first floor and basement space formerly occupied by Melting Pot. Yeah. Proposal to establish part time seasonal use of the existing plaza, uh, public plaza and to accommodate outdoor dining for the new restaurant, a business at 20 Grove Street, and the general public. The space is located within the Grove Street Plaza, a 0.35 plus minus acre property located on the northwest side of Grove Street at its intersection with Brook Street and is shown on Assessor's Map number 73 as lot 22 in the Central Business District Zone. Um, gentlemen, what do we got? This uh, application was submitted in conformance with sections uh, 1000 under special permit application, section 1020 business site plan application review. Um, this application is for a restaurant to go into the space that the melting pot previously occupied um, at Grove Street Plaza. Uh, the application was referred to the health department. Uh, they submitted comments for the record dated April 12th. It was also submitted or referred uh, to the fire marshal. He submitted comments for the record. Uh, both of those are included as part of your packets. Uh, a portion of the application does require that uh, for the outdoor seating component that uh, the applicant will need to secure appro approvals from uh, the Board of Selectmen as well as the Architectural Review Board. Uh, we understand from the applicant that they will be going before the Architectural Review Board in April, uh, specifically April 6th. Uh, yes. May 16th. May 16th. Thank you. Um, and they will also need to go before the, as I mentioned, the Board of Selectmen. Um, Mr. Maslin, Attorney Maslin, can provide some further clarifications on uh, scheduling that uh, may uh, re regard to the, their appearance before the Board of Selectmen. Um, as I said, a portion of their application does include outdoor dining. <clears throat> and outdoor tables and chairs in the plaza area. Uh, they're proposing 53 tables and 114 seats. Uh, the previous use of the building by the melting pot, the melting pot didn't really do any cooking of food. Um, so as part of this new application, they would be installing a hood and ventilation system in connection with uh, the new restaurant use. They've also provided some additional information regarding the use of the basement area in the building. And uh, like I said, Bob Maslin, Attorney Maslin is here this evening to present the application uh, and to answer any questions that you may have with uh, the rest of his team that's here. Okay, now there's a, I'm pretty sure there's a, there's a document that's filed on the land records that identifies the, um, the plaza and That's says correct. this first the board of selectmen control it. I didn't see it in the packet. I would like to try to get that put in. Have you seen it? We can enter that into the record. No, yeah. there is no doc there is a document. There is a document, but it's expired because it was personal to the melting pot. Okay. But we just see so that. So it's area. not a it's not like a zoning approval. It was a, a revocable license agreement. Specifically and another with the melting pot. So, okay. If we can just see that and get it added. You got it. Great. Mr. Maslin, okay, welcome. Good, good evening, everyone. Attorney Robert Maslin representing the applicants. Uh, Grove Street Plaza LLC is the owner of the property and Harvest Restaurant Group, which uh, 
He's planning to open a restaurant called Roots Ocean Prime in the space uh, we're talking about. With me this evening in the front row of the seats behind the table are Shed Glassmeyer and David Genovese, both of Grove, Grove Street Plaza LLC, Chip and Jake Grabowski, who are from here from Harvest Restaurant Group. And uh, I think you'll hear from Chip uh, later on. Uh, and I guess Jake is here for additional questions as they come up. Uh, as Fred mentioned, uh, special permit and business site plan review to basically fit up the space formerly used by the melting pot. What we're really talking about is restaurant for restaurant. Um, in addition, the space in the basement, which previously was approved for the melting pot use, it's about 1,500 square feet or so, uh, previously approved specifically for dry storage, employee restroom, lockers, changing area, freezer, cooler sink, and a small administrative office. Uh, we're asking, uh, in addition to those uh, activities, a new food prep area uh, located in the basement. And the second aspect of this is to reconfigure uh, and uh, enlarge, I guess, the uh, tables and chairs portion of the public and non-public plaza areas for out outdoor dining, obviously seasonal. What I'd like to do is start with Shed, where he can give you a little bit of background and then um, I'll come back, or maybe David will talk about the specific changes we're, we're using. So, uh, why don't you? Okay. <coughs> well, greetings, everyone. So, in 2005, just, say, just say, oh, say sorry, your yes. name and, and relationship for the record, Shed. Thank yes. You, so, I am Shed Glassmeyer, and um, uh, my mother's Penny Glassmeyer, and we're uh, we own Grocery Plaza LLC. Fantastic. Yeah. So in short, my mother, Penny, uh, in 2005, built Grove Street Plaza with the goal of creating a beautiful plaza for everyone to enjoy. And, you know, initially the commercial tenants didn't really take advantage of the plaza. You know, we had like JD Cosmetics and others that, a child clothing store, but we, you know, they evolved. And with Espresso Neat in 2009, and then later with Flower Water Salt, their clients really embrace the plaza. And, you know, seeing this, we want to keep it going and create a place for outdoor dining. And, you know, in 2010, the Nothing Pot did get initial approval for a limited um, outdoor dining in the plaza, but, you know, as you know, serving fondue really wasn't conducive to outdoor dining. So in short, we, um, David Genevieve, my mentor here, um, he uh, helped us locate uh, the hardest food, and um, we would be thrilled to bring in Roots Ocean Prime, we have our lease with them obviously, uh, to replace the melting pot, and um, establish you know, some true outdoor dining in the plaza for the whole town and community to enjoy. So, uh, no further ado, I would like to move along, but you know, I do want to say for the record, you know, we had a great, um, the melting pot was fantastic. Um, it's just time to try something new and hopefully get some outdoor dining in town. Additional outdoor dining. So Leases thanks. are allowed to expire. You're allowed to have the leases expire and change tenants. It's yes. perfectly fine. Excellent. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. To follow up on that, it's, you just you already have a restaurant space built out. There's changes because the new restaurant will have cooking, a whole full commercial kitchen, and but the good thing was, when Penny designed the building and built it, she built in shafts for the exhaust system. So that part's easy. Um, I think it'd be good if David came up and uh, talked about the uh, pro proposed changes to the plaza. Uh, David is, I don't have to introduce him, you, know, you all know him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. David Genovese, I'm really just here as, as an advisor to the Glassmeyers. Um, I help them basically um, find a new tenant, a replacement tenant for the project um, when it became clear that the melting pot wasn't going to stay. Um, we have had a lot of restaurant interest in the Corbin district 
the Glassmars are my partners in the Corbin District Project, and so you know we spent a lot of time talking about opportunities for enhancing the dining options in Darien and like what would fit in best. Uh, we redirected probably five or six restaurants that were interested in Corbin toward Grove Street Plaza. The Glassmars got to meet all the different operators and wanting some someone that would be, you know, kind of world class, national class operator. We were really excited to meet uh, Chip and Jake uh, from Harvest Restaurant Group, who have an impeccable reputation. I would encourage you, if you know anyone in Ridgewood, Summit, Princeton, Morristown, New Jersey, ask about Roots or Harvest, um, their restaurant chain or group of restaurants. They're family owned and operated. They have an unbelievable bench. My team and I have been amazed at the quality of the people, the quality of the staff, and we're super excited because a lot of people have said that you know they really thought Darien, one, one hole in the um, options is a steakhouse. And so this idea will be more, and Chip and, and Jake can talk more about it, but more of a steakhouse, seafood, and with vegetarian options also so that it appeals to the broadest mix. I'm going to hit some of the boring things that are in the record just to read it to you and make sure we're all on the same page. Um, there are some differences. Jeremy wanted us to highlight the differences between the original melting pot application and this application um, because the style of cooking is different, the style of the restaurant is different, um, the hours of operation are different. A um, melting pot was open Monday through Thursday 5 to 10 p.m. and 5 to 11 Friday and Saturday and 2 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Sunday. So it was mostly a dinner restaurant. Fondue is not so big usually in the daytime. Um, Harvest would like to be open Monday through Wednesday from 11.30 a.m. until 11 p.m., Thursday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, the melting pot approval, in terms of seating count, um, provided a maximum seat count of 164 people inside. Um, Harvest, because of the fact that they're expanding the prep area, the kitchen, and they'll have a bar in a different setting and a different setup, they'll have a total of 120 patrons inside. So 44 patrons, 44 fewer patrons on the inside. Um, they've got a preliminary design that's subject to some change, but that's generally where they expect to land. Can I ask you, Rick? Sure. Fred just quoted out different numbers. I mean, he was talking about the outside tables. I don't okay. think he quoted the inside tables. No, okay. Not. The outside. Okay. Yeah. Um, so as part of this, and we recognize, as Bob said, we have to go to the ARB, and I think Fred touched on it. We have to go to the ARB. We're proposing some landscaping changes. Um, we're proposing to remove the flower beds on Grove Street and to put seating there. Um, Chip and Jake have to design their signage, come up with their signage, but they actually want an added entrance to the restaurant here so that the restaurant actually, uh, I actually stepped by the microphone, so that the restaurant, um, you can enter the restaurant from Grove Street. And one of the key ideas is to kind of re-merchandise or represent the restaurant and the entry so that it presents toward the post road, drawing people in. Um, as Shed pointed out, um, you know, the, the, the um, Glassmeyers really want to make better use of the outside dining. And so what we've come up with is an idea that I can kind of walk <coughs> you through here. Um, the public plaza area, you know, as part of the application, when Penny designed, oh, should I use that? Oh, no, I can do it. <coughs> I can keep my mouth and my hand will connect. Um, yeah, it's not, it's this not area, it oh, it's not? No. Okay, I'll do it. Uh, well, here, I'll, I'll, how about you I'll, I'll do it? it. Okay. So the original public plaza area, when this was laid out, some of you may remember, some of you weren't on the board at the time that this happened, um, to build the third floor on the building above uh, the restaurant, the proposed restaurant, Penny had to dedicate public plaza space. It was a total of 1,775 square feet. This was part of the whole program that Darian has, where if you create public plaza space, you're entitled to a third floor in the CBD. Um, so that area that Bob was marking, that's the original definition of the public plaza. Um, the way it's functioned for years, the melting pot used some of the tables when they had their cocktail service and like appetizers thing. You know, we've had concerts out there every Friday nights in the summer. Um, the melt, the um, flower water salt in the, in the coffee shop generally use um, all of the space. And so what we're proposing is something a little bit different. We're proposing to add seats along Grove Street in front of both buildings. Um, the seats along in front of Espresso Neat and Flower Water Salt, the idea is that those seats, and this will be part of the ARB, there'll be seats and, chair, uh, seats and tables of a different style. So it'll sort of signal this is something different. Those are, the idea is that those are always available for patrons of 
uh, the uh, espresso neat or flour water salt or the public. And the idea is that until lunchtime, everything in the plaza, including everything along Grove Street, would be public. From lunchtime through dinner, um, the space from the midpoint of the plaza to the restaurant would be dedicated to uh, the, the Harvest Restaurant, the Roots Ocean Prime Restaurant. And then in the evening time, we would go all the way across the plaza to that row of tables and chairs alongside the coffee shop and the bakery, and those spaces would be available to or used by uh, uh, Roots Ocean Prime. So it's a sharing idea. We're kind of creating a floating, a floating public plaza. So this is a little bit of a different idea, but the problem is, candidly, that I think when Penny designed this originally and c conceived of the location of the public plaza, they weren't anticipating the idea of a restaurant really serving from there. And so to have the public plaza in the middle and then have like restaurant seats on both sides doesn't really make sense. So we're trying to kind of navigate, you know, and meet her obligation in terms of public plaza space, but navigate the practical reality of trying to run a restaurant, a first class restaurant in this location. Um, okay, so that's the, you said that the, the plaza that's on the deed is 1,025 square feet, right? 1,775. 1,775, okay. That's the piece of paper that, that I That might be what you're thinking about. Yeah, and I'm Bob was referring to the license to operate on it that, or in there, okay. uh, that area that the melting pot has. Yeah, that, so that's, we'll, yeah that's an important document. That's, you got that <coughs> plaza because of the third floor. For the third floor, Because exactly. that's something we're doing in town all over the Exactly. Place. Okay. And so we have to go back to the Board of Selectmen to uh, achieve the same license to use the space. And we ha they have to bless this idea of like the floating public plaza. Because that, that document, I think, says the public plaza is controlled by the Board of Selectmen, but the, the Grove Street Plaza LLC maintains it, Correct. cuts the grass, sweeps up the Maintains square, the fountain. Does, the does everything. Correct. Okay. That's the piece of paper. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so that's the most kind of complicated part of this. Um, I couldn't find, and I couldn't get from the owners of the melting pot, how many employees they had, but I don't think there's a real change in employees. Um, Harvest will have 12 employees during lunch hour and 20 employees during dinner hours. Um, as Bob mentioned, the ventilation, Penny thankfully provided for a chase, so we can easily put a proper odor controlling hood system in place on the top of the restaurant. Um, you know, we're gonna install that uh, uh, iron, the steel required of that. Um, it will be a, a hood system approved by the town, by the health department. Um, you know, the Glassmeyers own the building. They have all the apartment tenants. Their interests are aligned with the town. We don't want the neighborhood to smell like a steakhouse um, outside, so we're gonna make sure that that's done properly. Um, and then also, as Bob mentioned, just again to restate it, um, Melting Pot had the right to use the first floor space and 1,200 to 1,300 feet of basement space. We wanna do the same here. Um, it will be fully renovated, um, and you know they're starting the dialogue now with the health department, so all of this is subject to health department approval. Um, Lastly, no real change. That's for the prep kitchen, right? Correct. And just for the record, we have prep kitchens all over town. We have Correct. one, I think, at 1020 restaurant. 1020 has some in the basement. The, the, Bodega the, has upstairs, second floor. The, you know, the, the diners up on um, Old Kings, up on Post Road have them. We approved all that. They make salad down there. And I think also we did it for Parlor Pizza. You know what we forgot in here, Bob, is the, um, well, I know it's in the package that you gave, but we don't have the floor plan for the, the preliminary design of the restaurant space. Before we leave this page, the, the section that's in the, quote, public plaza, that's earmarked, which is the fountain, the four tables to the top, and the four tables below, yep. those are currently not used by any, under a license <laughs> agreement by any, of the number 20 or number 14, correct? I can, I think I can out. address that. Yeah, there's none of all. If, if I, I figured out how this uh, little laser pointer works. The plaza is this broken outline. It yep. kind of has a little mm -hmm. base to it, kind of. The melting pot had use of this area between the fountain and Grove Street, and they had three tables with chairs. I don't think they ever really used them yep. because I think in the mornings and toward lunch, I know I've done it, uh, Espresso Neat would have its patrons out there having their cappuccino and tea and yeah. all that. 
I'm just curious about the, the public has kind of gotten used to thinking that those are for the public. Yeah. And that, you know, you see people conducting interviews there, you know, you, you see people doing things that aren't necessarily tied to either establishment. Um, sure, just, it's like just curious meeting how, your clients at, at a coffee yeah, shop and doing yeah, business like, yeah, there. Yeah, like, or and I've seen people getting interviewed, you know, no, for job yeah. interviews, like right there. Yep. Um, how do we envision that these, gonna work? These chairs and tables yep. here yep. are gonna do that all the time. I mean, they'll, they'll always be available yep. Yep. for... Um, do that again, Bob? The one dropping knee? Yeah. And right along here, right along the... the, the I'm the just walls. curious Who's because of what was designated as public mm -hmm. by this. I, didn't know, I don't know any of the, you know, the, the license. The donor home. <laughs> visually, <laughs> visually, you're just not going to know. Th mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no fence, there's no mm -hmm. roping off or tape mm -hmm. or anything okay. like that just where people could look and say, oh, I, I can use this because it's public. It, it just was never like that. Yep, yep. And I don't think any of the public plazas in town that were set up in order to get third floor area yep. ever had anything like that. But we did, we did 20 it. doesn't have it. Um, we, did it for, we did it for um, Darien Commons Federal. For who? Darien Commons Federal. Okay. Because their their restaurants what a dedicated plaza, so mm -hmm. you're gonna see like a QR code on the thing on the table that says oh, I see. this is for Gregory's okay. Coffee, this is for right. Seymour's. And, and I think what's happened over time outdoor dining has become a thing. Of course, yeah. You know, when when we did this development application, I didn't personally do the, the melting pot application, but I did the whole development. And at that time you didn't have much in the way of outdoor dining. I don't think you even had the parking regulations for outdoor dining the way you have them today. I believe the only one that I'm, I'm, I'm aware of, I think, was at, at the Goose, where they had that little fenced-in area along the, the way through. And I remember Dave Keating being a little bit, um, I don't know what the word was, but nervous, nervous because that was supposed to be public plaza. And then, I mean, this is even before my time, they started using that little area for tables and chairs. People would have, actually, eventually, they were able to eat down there. Then 2020 came along, and everybody had outdoor dining because that's the only way you could survive. But as I was talking to Jeremy before, 2020 and COVID seemed to be a, a moving force to bring things up in terms of technology and, you know, outdoor dining became part of that. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. I get some Go ahead. Um, who maintains the tables? Who brings them in at night? They no, they're not running at night. So, so they'll just be out 24-7? They're out. Okay. So we're going to add all tables because I'm... Essentially what you're saying is the public plaza at nighttime is no longer public and they can use this narrow strip of tables in front of the two closed businesses, right? Because they both don't open, they aren't open late. Correct. Right. So are you going to be responsible for picking up the garbage on those and maintaining them and, and, and doing that? We are. Right now. Right now. It's well, the story that, that, of my life. That's part mm -hmm. of the plaza. Well, I mean, I go to the plaza all the time on Saturday mornings. It's, it's always a little rough. Um, so I'm concerned that you're taking over more of the plaza and adding f how many more tables now versus what's there? Uh, I don't know the answer to that because the tables, you know, honestly, the tables have, we knew this was coming for a while, so they we were really dealing with like the upgrade to the tables because we knew we were going to be doing something significant with the new operator. So for the last 18 months that we've done melting pots been on the watch list, no, we weren't doing anything. But we understand it's going to have to be really well maintained. And, and you know, the thing is, nobody really, none of the tenants really owned it right. because it was public. But now it's more of a partnership with the Harvest folks, and like they'll be owning, you know, the right to use some of those tables. It's, it'll be a different, you know, management experience. I mean, but on a Saturday night, if you go to get ice cream across the street at Gopher and then walk <laughs> down there, you're just going to start kicking families out. You can't. You can't sit there. You won't, well, you, you won't be able to sit there at all, it's it, melt except for those, those couple ones. No, I'm, I'm on here. Yeah, but otherwise, yeah. they couldn't go sit next to the fountain. But honestly, I watch this pretty carefully. My office is right there. I don't see a lot of people taking ice cream to Grove Street Plaza. They sit in that. It's only the park. April. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I don't, I don't so, see people walking there much. They go when we have the concerts. Right. Um, so the concerts are going to go away. The concerts are going to move to uh, Corbin District. Corbin District. Yeah. yeah. I think the ice cream's going to go there, too. Because uh, I think it might be some of those the plaza pocket areas. Might be a back, isn't closer. It? Maybe. Isn't the pocket park at, um, at 1020 Come Back? Yep. Yeah. But that, that, the, the use of the plaza, well, no. that's the 1,775 square feet, is controlled by the Board of Selectmen. Yep. That's so the bottom line. they're yep. preempting. They're yeah. they're giving they're showing to us first. Yep, got it. If we approve it and board a segment denies it, then all bets are off. Right. But we can right. also weigh in however we feel. Correct. Sure. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean if we don't like the fact that there'll no longer be a public plaza half the time at least, um, we can say so. Well the key the key thing I would the key thing I would highlight is that it's actually <laughs> much more the intention is on average, through the course of a day, let's say daylight hours and early evening hours, on average, there's a lot more public usage yeah. of this space than there is under the current situation, as, as defined legally. This is the only public plaza that has to be provided. Everything else the last members could have rented to the tenants and taken away from yeah. others. The yeah. intention is all of this is available to all of the public, you know, all night from morning hours until lunch. At lunch, you know, the restaurant gets some of it. This is all still available for the public. And if you really look at like occupancy patterns and visitation patterns, it's more in the morning and the early afternoon. There's not a lot of people there in the evening. And then I think this was part of the last night of vision. If you just think about like that beautiful place that Penny designed and built, <coughs> the beautiful trees and the up lighting and the fountain. It's an amazing outdoor dining place, and it really doesn't get any use at night by the public, the public plaza. I mean, we, we, we want to meet the obligation to provide public space, but it isn't really used in that way at night. Um, yeah, you uh, so much about this. Yeah, to yeah, you got to go. She yeah, can pick. We, we have a new, I think that yeah. microphone's TV 79. Yeah, this that one's TV 79. Uh, These other ones pick up the record reporter. So she, she's not as tough as... Or, no, or I just want to re reiterate that David and I spent a ton of time trying to th thinking through all the different scenarios and thinking about you and the interviews really until 5, 5.30, yeah. half the plaza will be available to the public at least. Yeah. Right? No, and I think in, in some ways, you know, I'm a big bottleneck theory person, and when you go there when there's so much demand in the mornings and the daylight times, there's not enough tables as it stands now. So I could see this configuration being so much better for the way this plaza gets used by our public every day. And then it's just, it's like anything, they're just going to have to get accustomed to, you know, at nighttime, it, it has a different formatting, I, you know, and then if, as we're bringing online Corbin District public plaza spaces, I think um, it won't be as missed. But right now, people are like, oh, the menorah lighting was there, and you know, Nielsen's did their flower bomb, you know, there. So it's just, it's just, you know, managing expectations like anything else. And remember, this is only the warm months of the year, right? Yeah, yeah. But also this thought of adding all these new tables that are not there by removing the beds. The beds. Yeah. It's going to be a big project for us to undertake, but we want to just create yeah. more seating for yeah. more no, people like, to enjoy. Yeah, no, I do. So. I think it's question for Let's, Do we have to change the zoning to unpublic the park? Like, we, they had to set aside the public park due to the third floor, so do we have to change that original approval if we're, no, if we're now taking away the public space? In federal, no. we moved it. Uh, right. My belief is that you're changing the uses allowed, and that, it, as they said, it's only certain times and certain days. That, that would be my reading. Of course, you know, the selectmen will be the ultimate arbiter of yep. how they want the public plaza to be used. But we're not giving it back forever. No. No. Let's say some future commission, because I can imagine both ways. The future commission says. Well, we want it to be public again. Sorry, no more of these right. tables. This is and it ridiculous. would surprise me if the site would only give a year or two or three. But I could also I could also see we've opened the door. Another restaurant ten years from now that serves breakfast comes in and says, "Well, we've got the public plaza all night. Now we want it all day, and now it's not public anymore." Right. Well, right? It so. depends how you write it up. If you write it up, yeah, to, to expire. Really limit it the way you want. Then they can't come in and say, "Well, now let us do breakfast out there." And if I, if I could, um, just to yeah, just to follow we up so on your point. That's why we were so specific about it. till lunchtime, from yeah. lunchtime. Like, 
if you think about the average space available to the public, it's greater than the commitment today. Well, let's back up one second before you go too deep into the weeds. Okay. Um, outdoor seating, it's 114 seats. Yes. In indoor seating, it's 120 seats. Yes. Plus the bar. Okay. Plus the bar. So that's including the bar. That oh, includes the bar? bar? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's 224 seats, mm -hmm. right? And, and I just got back from being in Europe in Thanksgiving and at Easter. It's freezing outside, and people are still eating outside in, in, during Thanksgiving week. Do you have Were other you restaurants? Iceland? What's that? Were you in Iceland? No, <laughs> I was in Italy and Spain. They, have to, they literally give you blankets wow. to sit at tables outside, and these people are eating yeah. up a storm. So well, in, Europe, in Italy, the pigeons eat out there all the time too. So why don't we? Why don't we keep but to follow you up on your but I, I, what I'm trying what I'm trying to do because it's going to get into parking later. We get now we have 224 seats versus what used to be is 106, 164 I think in total, and the number of tables probably pretty much doubled, right? How many tables are in inside? Total. There's three now. I mean, there's, there's no, no, plenty of room total, there. No, no, in total, total for the restaurant, total for the restaurant. For the restaurant. Well, the, I, I will about seating count, not table count, because that's all that really. Right, you, you did. You're you actually did. going from 164 patrons at bar stools or in seats at tables down to 120. And I think the key thing to plus remember. The outs, plus the outside. Plus the outside. But the key thing to remember is that you add, and we've seen this with 1020 directly, when you add outside seats, when, it's, when the weather's nice, the demand shifts to outside and you don't fill the restaurant. So. It's not like you get 284 people. It just doesn't that's, happen. That's what I want to make sure. The kitchen sure. can't do it. Right. That's I mean, what I want to make sure we're doing that. Because yep. it, I, I, I hear you 100% I hear you hundred percent. I agree with you because people say inside or outside. And they say inside the, the wait is five minutes, outside is an hour. Right. Yeah. And people go, okay, I'll wait, for, I'll wait for an outside table. Right. It's July 4th weekend. This? Right. But you have to, you have to look yeah. and see, you know, in total, there's going to be 224 seats, which is a right. big difference. I put up the slide with the. Uh, oh, you got it. Yeah, the, the, this is in the application material, and it's basically the floor plan. There's probably going to be a few tweaks depending on what the health department uh, ends up doing. But Grove Street's at the bottom. This is the current entrance. Current this entrance is, the is new over entrance here. From yep. Grove Street. This is for handicap accessibility. This is this is going to be a step here because of the grade change. Right here, and yeah, you know, the the entrance for the apartments. And the elevator off on the side. So that, that gives you an idea of what the layout is. But to get back to your point on how many people or how many tables and all that, it used to be, in most cases, build it and they will come. Well, they came, but now you have to put tables there. It, it's kind of the opposite, but I, I, I think it'll work. I think it'll work. Well, but also on that point, not necessarily, but also, um, we have to give credit where credit is due in the new crowds that are coming, David. Um, and they're probably not going to stay strictly in the Corbin district. There's going to be some flow elsewhere, outside to, uh, to uh, Grove Street and whatnot. And uh, those folks may not all want to, may I call it a fairly high-end restaurant? Uh, you know, those are, not, uh, those are not Burger King prices. So um, that's... I worry about that. I worry about taking away a lot of the public space when there's going to be a lot of demand for public space. I think this will police itself because if there's not a great demand for the outdoor tables, then that area is going to shrink back and that area will be again available to the public. You know, that's kind of a management tool for the and management <coughs> flexibility. What, the, uh, they'll the say, we don't need that table today, so you can sit here? Yeah, or, or you know, let's say they're, they're using, I don't know, five tables regularly, and that's, that's probably not going to be the case. But let's say it was. Less, fewer tables than what's there. They're not, they'll leave them, leave them uh, for the public. Yeah, yeah, it, that's it, a possibility. Did they get yeah. parking? Yeah, we'll get into that in a little bit. It, in, in practice, I mean, I'd, uh, I'm gonna say it again. When I was in when I was in Europe, I sat at a table, and the guy who owned the restaurant said, "I thought I was in a public plaza." He goes, "That's my table. Get up and move." <laughs> you know, and the only way I knew was a table that was not attached to the restaurant because it was one of those things with the QR code on it. Because that's the way the world is now. You flip and you get the restaurant. Did you ask to see his zoning approval to, to make sure? <laughs> uh, 
Um, Can I because touch on a couple of sure. other like the technical things? But that, is that chip? before you hold before you go the the outdoor seating when it goes dedicated? I'm going to call it. Is, is that at five o'clock or is that at eleven o'clock? I'll show you here, uh, Steve. And I'll start over on the <clears throat> restaurant side, fourteen. So you have this wall. No, what time? What plaza. time? I get it. No, I get it. What time? Okay. Lunchtime, say 11.30. From here, this midline right through the plaza to the right is all going to be the restaurant. Dinner, that line moves over two rows of tables over to here. Got so that this area in between here, this almost full row with the... <clears throat> With the fountain in the middle, and then this row become. So I can still get my sandwich at, at Uncle You can still Deli. get your sandwich so get at Uncle Deli, Deli, and, Deli and sit next to the fountain. Mm -hmm. Not next to the fountain. Well, I don't know. Are they still open? Not next to the fountain. <coughs> oh, no, lunchtime, no, sure. Lunch oh, lunchtime? Sure. Yeah, I sit in this row. Right. Because you got to. Well, what about. Sit in this row, too. And the guy, the guy on the other side of that uh, dividing line is eating a steak sandwich. <coughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. But at so, nighttime, you can't go to the fountain. Correct. So That's off limits. You so if you're walking your dog, like everybody who walks their dog around it at night, the dog correct. run right to the fountain. That correct. will yeah, that will go. Correct. Right. So just well, to actually, may I add, may yeah. add one thing? <clears throat> so one of the things that we expected you might ask too about, and we weren't 100 percent sure to be candid, is the um, the issue of liquor licensing and how that works because. We've often thought that like the liquor control authority would require like a, a barricade. They do not in this case. So we had the liquor consultant that's working on the project who actually lives in Darien down the street from here, visit the site, take a look. She provided a letter, which is in the file. Um, I think you guys have a copy of it. Um, because this area is kind of protected, she, the, the, the state will not require it to be cordoned <laughs> off per se. I think, you know, Chip and Jake could answer this better, but I think the idea would be that these tables are set up there's a different table used alongside the building, alongside the coffee shop and the flower water salt. A different style? Or different a different color? style to signal something different is happening here. These probably all be the same style, and I'd imagine that they put a tablecloth down on the, on, the, right. on the tables when it comes time for lunch to signify, okay, this is a, a, a restaurant that's going to be used by Roots. And a roots it's a white party. tablecloth yeah. with the, mm. the um, flatware. So that's how you'll know. You're not going to eat on a metal table. Right. You know, a steel I got table. Again, um, this whole use of the plaza is not our jurisdiction. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know, so we're going through a lot of this stuff. Yeah, I yeah. mean, we care about use and parking and seats and yeah. seats yeah. and yeah. restaurants. Well, I, and yeah. I don't have to favor this site plan if it includes that kind of use of the. No, you don't do it. All. You don't so know. Anyway, not all of us could not approve it. Then what? If the if the P and Z doesn't approve it, right. and then the restaurant. There will be no question for the selectmen, will there? Correct. That's right. <coughs> yeah. Correct. So, but I can tell you, I can tell you, having spent time with you know <clears throat> dozens and dozens of restaurant groups, that everything today is about outdoor dining, and everybody wants you know as much outdoor dining as they can because that's what their customers want, and they're hospitality people in the business of trying to please their customers, and so we're trying to find a way to make it work you know in a yep. way that is you know sufficiently <clears throat> attractive for this high quality operator to come from New Jersey and, and set up their first um, restaurant in Connecticut, you know, versus some of the others that we could have rented it to, who I don't think you'd be as happy with. So, I mean, that's, it's a fine line. We're trying to bring the highest quality and that sometimes comes with a different level of demand. Um, you know, they have a higher bar they're trying to accomplish than some of these, some of the operators that are around here are more like local and I'd say like entrepreneurial kind of got bubble gum and shoestrings. This is not a bubble gum and shoestrings operation. Uh -huh. Yep. Well, to go back to the point of the beginning, Penny and you all got a third floor on those buildings because of the public use of that space. So I'd rather they didn't take over the whole yeah. place. But to be to be clear, just to make sure we're on the same page, we're not proposing to reduce <coughs> the use of the plaza by the public. We're just changing the area that the public can use. So we're to make sure that we're we're plus. moving it. Yeah, we're I mean, because you right. gave us you gave us the plan of the public plaza correct here, and that's it. The, the other piece of paper that I'm talking about exhibits this as like you know C exhibit A. That's yeah. the plan, but the, we did the at, at federal, we yeah. moved their public plaza around because Seymour's and Malta and Gregory's Coffee wanted a dedicated plaza with those of their seats and their had their little QR code or menu on it. Yeah, I think if that's Penny you know if Penny hadn't found the melting pot. 
if Penny hadn't found the melting pot, you know, 20 years ago, you know, and, and you know, Chip showed up and said, I want to open up a steakhouse in Dairy, we would have been having this conversation 20 years ago. Um, it's just that they did not really use outside dining at all. And if you want to have a nice outdoor setup, to have the public plaza just be in the middle of the plaza, it just doesn't really make sense from an operational point of view. So that, that's really how we We're not getting we a are. move here, though. What's that? This is, they're not moving it here. They're just taking it away. They're not, they're, not, they're not proposing shifting the public plaza to the west. Right. This they're, document's not changing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. My point is that the, the, the tables that are on yeah, yeah, the I centerpiece are shifting. Yeah. Right. But if I could add, I think your approval, if what we're asking for is an approval that basically acknowledges this floating concept, which I think if you look at the essence of what it accomplishes, it's more public plaza space and better public plaza space than what exists today. I don't get that. Because, a lot because of this is, have to if, spend money but, but, but the point is, this area alongside the restaurant and this area alongside the other building, this could be taken away at any time. That's not public plaza. The only public plaza is that centerpiece along the fountain. So in the mornings, we're saying all of it is basically public. All of it, including the new tables that are going on Grove Street. At lunch, we take away a portion. At dinner, we take away a different portion. But like that's I don't know, I'm not probably not articulating this well, but the point is that on average there's a lot more space available to the public. And I believe, being one of the more frequent visitors to Grove Street Plaza, that there's more space available when the demand is greatest. There's more seats. There's, there's more, more seats. Chairs. That's what we're proposing to do. So you know, okay. that was the objective and the goal. Okay. All so right. What else we um, have to last point through? I would make and then I can, we can turn it over to Chip and Jake is that um, you know, the refuse removal, you know, Jeremy had asked a question about just, you know, any change in restaurant refuse removal. The location of the refuse removal won't, uh, refuse containers won't change. Um, the frequency of pickup may increase, but it's in a um, municipal parking lot, basically, that Penny donated to the town. So um, that's our responsibility to maintain. And so there'd be, you know, probably an increase in pickup uh, because of the added service and the nature of the business. but. Um, no change in the location, no change in the parking around the site. So we're not, uh, we're not upsizing the dumpster area? No, we don't think we need to. Okay. All right. How many times do you think it gets picked up a week now? You don't know. I don't know. You don't I manage think it's like building, three, right? three times per week maybe, but we'd go to five times per week. Okay. Five or six. As, a, ever, uh, as a reference point, David, how many seats are at um, 1020? Do you know offhand? Oh outdoor. Indoor, outdoor? Indoor and outdoor Indoor total is or how many square feet? Is 1020? Probably about 140. 1020 is 3,600 feet on the first floor, and about a thousand feet on the second floor. So 1020 is actually a little smaller than this on a combined basis. 3,600 and a thousand feet on the about second. About a thousand feet on the on the in the, basement. In the basement. Yeah. So 4,600 feet, and this is uh, about 5,000 feet, 5,500 feet in total. So this says 1,371. How much? How many square feet is in the basement? I don't know what you're. I don't know what you're looking at. But the um, the notice, the public notice. I think there's a typo because the. Um, this says a new restaurant. It's 1,371. No, that's feet. not correct. This is the total that's square footage. Is 4,013 feet on the first floor. 4,013 feet on the first floor. And approximately so the one that came to the hundred feet on the, on the lower level. Yeah. So it's it's bigger than ten twenty. Did you see that anywhere, sir? Indoor and outdoor will be bigger than ten twenty. Indoor the and outdoor. Indoor is bigger than twenty ten twenty? I don't think the outdoor is I don't think that the outdoor is bigger than ten twenty. Ten twenty has more seats between the um, driveway to first from first county, the post road and the back. Well, I can get you an exact count if you need that, but I can tell from my well, that 1020 is larger. But in both cases, it's important to note that in both cases, we both, Penny and we, are the only people since 2000, I think, who actually donated land to the town under the zoning regulations and, in, and became exempt from the on-site parking requirements. So we are actually at this location exempt from the on-site parking requirements. I, I agree with you 100%. I'm not questioning that. I want to make sure that what is in place for you guys is the same going forward. Correct. For the next guy. Yep. 
That's that's what matters to me because I want to. That's why I want that piece of paper in the file so yep. it's there so we can get it, and it's not because. I think it's other people asking for the same thing. I think it's important to note also, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you you can make this approval uh, for this particular operator, and you can say that if the style of restaurant changes, if the you know someone made a point earlier about uh, what if someone wants to open up a breakfast place here someday and they say oh we want all of it all the time. You can put that in the approval. We have no problem with that. There's no intention to open for breakfast. They want to do brunch on the weekends, but there's no intention for breakfast. And if, if you know, the world's going to change again, all we know is 10 years from now, downtown's going to look different again from the way it does today. So we're totally fine with you making this approval specific to roofs. OK. We just got to nail down the square footage of this thing. Uh, 4,013. Is that, in the, is that in the new narrative we got today? It's in the original narrative. <coughs> the original narrative, which is in the packet. Uh, <coughs> page one, the paragraph at the bottom. Okay. okay. It says the melting pot occupied yeah. the entire 4,000 the first floor. Okay. Is the notice wrong? The notice, the notice wrong. is wrong. So it's a re notice? Oh, you don't have to do it. So that's your picture, Bob. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bob submitted the notice? No, I, no, I, th I think the legal notice is okay because it says in the space formerly occupied by the melting pot. Okay. The tariff first floor is 4,013 square feet, and then there's 1,500 square feet in the basement. So that's where you're getting your 5,500 square feet from. Okay. All right, what else do we have to do to go over this application? Because we're not do moving you, do you only, Before I bring Chip up, I just want to make one more point, and that is the commission and the Board of Selectmen in 2010 approved the use of the lower half, this area here, actually not even including the fountain. And in that area was three tables for four. And so, that, so basically the commission and the Board of Selectmen approved half of what we're proposing now. So it's not like we're suddenly putting a whole bunch of new tables or taking away public area. The other point I want to make is but they, this they entire case for right? way less than, there's so much more than half. You're, that would be six tables. You're, you're you, saying right well, now there's be, three approved uh, at the bottom of the, well, of the fountain, and now you want to take over the whole fountain and put 22 tables. Mm, no. no you're at night. We're no, we're How talking many tables about outside at night? No, no, what we're talking about is a public plaza. And Can you, you go to, on, on your thing, do you have A15? 12 here? here. Do you have A15 in that thing? Um, yeah, I believe so. Twenty one, twenty two. Uh, yeah, that's it. So that shows that one shows eight yeah, this tables. Yeah, shows the cross hatched area. Right, which that's the de that's a here. dedicated public plaza. That's right? the public plaza we're talking about. Yep. So, from the fountain down, twelve seats and in, in three tables. Well, that's four tables for four. The proposal is two tables for four and two tables for two. So it's the same number of seats. So you're saying that that document that dedicates the bottom half is someplace? That's the license agreement. It's not a change to the to the dedication. I, I see. It's just it's permission from the Board of Selectmen to use it for the melting pot restaurant. That's use. a license agreement that you mentioned at the beginning that's expired. Right. Got it. Well, it, it, it was personal to the melting pot. It's revocable and the melting pot's not there anymore, so it's gone. Okay. But it's a similar agreement. But really what we're talking about is just adding another 12 seats. Let's stick that document and in the even file that, too. yeah, we put it, 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 technically it's in the record anyway because it goes with the property. But um, the- I just want it in this packet. No, it's not in the packet. Um, <clears throat> but the other point to make here is in 2010, there was no mention of additional tables outside the public plaza area that would be available to the public. 
this application has many more tables available to the public up until lunchtime, and it still has, well, I have to go back to the other plan, but it still has a, a significant number of tables available to the public even during the dinner hour. Yep. So it, it's, it's, so try, I mean, try to look at it as not so much as somebody taking away a public plaza, it's, it's changing the way it's used and opening up for public use the non-public plaza areas between the two buildings and along the Grove Street side of both buildings. I, th I think if you look at it that way, you see, really, it's, it's a, I mean, all of these tables for up until 11.30 can be available to the public, and that wasn't necessarily true before. Yeah, but I think the whole purpose of the public plaza was to keep that fountain available to the public, right? Like, it's right in the center of the public plaza. It's, well, it's the key feature of that of that entire development. Well, each public plaza has its own purposes for sure. This is no question. At 1020, there's a footpath, you know, that goes underneath the second floor. That's public plaza. You know, you wouldn't think of putting tables there because it's designed to function that way. Um, I'm not sure if do you have public plaza along the driveway? I'm not sure if there's public plaza over there. Here, here's here's a separate question. Did you did you explore the the possibility of for if you're going to go with this floating public plaza concept? Does does it float? Does it actually exist as a float? I mean, you're no. saying you're going to make hear me out. You're going to make designated spaces public at certain hours, but why not just designate those as the public plaza then? Why would you just shift the public plaza I, over? And you solve the whole problem. I have to think about. I have to think about that. I mean, I do. honestly, I think what we were trying to do is address like the practical reality of how the whole plaza is used. And if Chip and Jake's firm is not using it in the morning, we were just making all of it kind of all of it public. Um, you know, that area along Espresso Need and Melting Pot. We were saying that will always be 24/7 public. You know, we were trying to give more than just shifting the 1,700 or 1,800 feet over to the left. So I think it's a, I honestly think it's a better outcome based on how people use Grove Street Plaza. Um, I think the morning hours, you know, with every, people having all those seats along the post road or along Grove Street rather, and through the whole thing, I mean, that's when, it, that's when the use is greatest. Um, Nighttime use, it's not that significant. You know, there's a passerby here and there with a dog, but it's not, it's not that significant. And candidly, people have gotten hurt, you know, kids have gotten hurt climbing around the fountain, slipping and getting cut. Oh, now you're going to badmouth the fountain? No, I'm, I'm just saying, that's, that's reality. That's our reality. Um, if you ask Penny, would she build that fountain again, she'd probably say no. A lot of people say no. Um, so anyway, I think if you really look at it, I think we're giving a more. It is a floating concept. I think we're open to the idea of moving the public plaza to the side, if that's simpler, but we really felt that this was a more generous allocation of space to the public across the day and night. All right, let, let's go back Can, to another thing. On that plan, it, unless my fingers are wrong, I count 42 tables. The narratives in one part says 43 tables, and in the updated <clears> one we got today it says 53 tables. So let's try to nail down how many tables and how many seats we're supposed to be raised. <clears throat> that plant's inside our packet is A14. Well, I think, I think for these tables, I'm a little suspicious. This is subject to a refinement. I'm a little suspicious that it's going to be a little bit more than a little bit of 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 a so there might be seven along um, Grove Street. Okay, I got 43 now. So you minus minus those two. So you're really 41 because that's the front entrance, right? Yeah, this is the new entrance. All right, so the, the updated narrative from today, April 25th, is wrong. That says 53. Our lawyer, our, lawyer, our lawyer is very good with words, but he can't count. Yeah, <laughs> no, I hear you. No, I'm kidding. 
He emailed it. On his letterhead. All right, so it's 43 tables outside, and the seating is still 114. Seating is 114. I counted that. 114, right? 114. 114 okay. is correct. I think the five was supposed to be a four. Okay. And it, it right now, just, I mean, I, I, I know the tables move around. Right now, it's 46 plans, 15. There's eight tables. So, so your point is you from eight eight tables in the public plaza, right, to forty to forty three tables? No. 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 It's, it's eight in the public plaza. I, I, we're, we're, what we're doing here is proposing to make all of the those tables open to the public. Regardless whether there's a public plaza document or not, they're right. just going to be open to the public. All 43 tables. All Correct. Up Correct. until noon. Correct. And the 11. only public plaza question is the eight tables within the public plaza area. And what we're doing is proposing to double the seating in the public plaza and make it available up until all of it available up until 1130. Got it. The rest of it's on non-public land, but the Understood. proposal here is make it all public under the schedule, and if that's the way you write up the resolution, that's what we have to abide by. You don't have to change the location of the Understood. public plaza because it's so the well, use of the land that you're approving, and that's obviously a condition because that's what we're proposing. So now there's, there's so. eight tables in the public plaza, and that is going to be 43 tables in total in on total. the entire shoot match. Right. And so you're, you're technically going from eight tables in a public plaza to 43 tables. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going from actually well, three. Well, there's more tables out there in total today. I'm just looking at the plan, Bob. I mean, I, it's, I'm not out there. No, I got it. I've I been there it. many yeah. times, and Mr. Genovese moves the table over because it was too close to the band. I mean, if one leg is, happens to be on the public plaza versus... Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to understand what's n what's not public plaza. Um, you're saying what what it is from is the evening time. That's what you're describing is no longer non-public, right? But you just um, let me see if I can do this. What what is it that that um, what's the name of this LLC? Grove uh, Street Plaza. Yeah. Okay. What area did they get? in exchange for the third floor? <coughs> in the yellow. They gave, yellow. They, LLC gave, the yellow. Okay. created this public 1,775 okay. for third floor mm -hmm. here. Okay, that's good. And I at the same time, the LLC, that's you have to take the kind of property around here to create buildings in the park. Okay. So there was a two-step process. Com complete with finished so part of parking spaces. Oops. What did you say? Part of the part, the public space is actually a sidewalk, I guess, there? Correct. Uh, I see. Okay. Yep. Yep. So the public has access now to the fountain from both sides, Correct. the rear and the front. Right. Yep. And Correct. under yours, there would be no access. At dinner time. At dinner time. At dinner time. Yeah. They'd still have access. You'd have half, at lunch. half of it you could sit at at lunch. Yeah. So in theory, there could be... 30 people eating Uncle's Deli sandwiches and, and uh, butcher shop sandwiches on the left, and then on the right, empty white tables. Awesome. And there's a picture in the Darien Times that says, former public plaza, no longer, pub, no longer public, exclusive only to the steakhouse in Darien. That's, that's, possible. that's, that's a possibility. Okay. I think it's unlikely, but it's possible. You can, get a, you can get a steak sandwich from the butcher and eat it there, or you can get a steak sandwich <laughs> from Roots and eat it there. Yeah. No, one guy has a steak dinner to go and sit there. Uh, I think one thing that we just need to keep front of mind is if you have been to Westport lately, there have been some beautiful downtown spaces that every time I go, they're they're empty. And we, they're, they don't have a vibrancy. They're beautiful to look at and walk through, but they're, they don't have a vibrancy. And we have this in, inherent vibrancy in this area right now and we have bottlenecks at certain times of the day, and I think this is definitely something worthwhile to try because I think it will go with the cadence of mm -hmm. what's happening already in the space. Have you ever been to Welk on Riverside Avenue? Yeah. That at night on a nice summer yeah. night, yeah. that's loaded with people. Yeah. 
So. And there's a shortage of tables and chairs. At the end of the day, you know, we, we will definitely weigh in, but, you know, the selectmen have to, they're the ones that decide what happens in that public space as far as the license to that. Mm -hmm. I, I would also just, you know, keep in context with the Corbin District Office Building, which is 100,000 square feet in total, you have 300 additional people working downtown who aren't really working there today. And, you know, based on the people that we're signing leases with and who are coming, they're, you know, they're customers of Roots Steakhouse or Roots Ocean Prime. You also have, you know, 116 new apartments in the vicinity of people who are new customers. So, I mean, I don't worry. I, this is one thing I don't worry about, having, you know, underwritten the Grabowski's operation and being close to, like, who's coming to town. I don't worry that we'll have empty seats outside. On a nice day, if it's too hot, people might not use the seats outside. And that's, remember, that's also what happens, practically speaking, even at 1020. If it's too hot in the summer, people are inside. They're not using the outside seats. If it's nice out, they all want to be outside, and there's fewer people inside. So, so it, relative to this, you have to take it to ARB. There's no pergolas, no awnings, no. there's no umbrellas. No. There's no misters like in Phoenix and then in the middle of summer. Okay. No, no. It's just, we're just, you know, we just want to put beautiful tables around the trees and the fountain. The hostess station, you move inside at night? Um, Mr. Grabowski would have to answer that. Do you want to have a minute? Just the Grabowski's? last thing before, so we, we need to approve the use of the basement for the prep kitchen. That's one. And this outside <laughs> plaza. Talk to me about lighting for this thing. There's no intention of changing lighting other than maybe to have table lighting. Um, again, Mr. Grabowski can confirm, but at this point, the trees are uplit. There's beautiful lighting around the building. Um, you know, we have to protect the apartment tenants above, and we want to be respectful of the neighbors at Clock Hill Homes behind. So the intention is, you know, to not change it materially, maybe just have on-table on lighting. Because the other thing we have to look out for is, is lighting and noise. Now you have 116 people out, eating outside there at 9 o'clock on a Thursday. Eight. And that, that's just, you know, white noise from people sitting there talking. Yeah, um, I mean, the good news is that the Glassmeyers, you know, own that issue, right? The, there's an alignment of interest because they have the apartment tenants. They have to answer to the apartment tenants also. So um, you could have people, candidly, who didn't sign up to live above a restaurant that's active at night. So there could be a change in some of the tenants over time. That's possible. They're rental units. They're not condos. So, I mean, that, that could happen. I lived on 2nd Avenue above a restaurant. Yeah. But, I mean, with the outside, we had complaints about the music, the concerts. I mean, we have, you know, there's nothing you can do in any town like this where you don't get ovations on one hand and scowls on the other. I mean, we, we you know, we had, to, we had to cut the hours back on the concert series because there was a resident who, you know, didn't want the concert going on beyond nine because it's loud. But okay. we did that. So, so we compromise and we, we find solutions. So there's no new lighting? There's no No, that, there's no music. intention. No. I mean, we might have quiet music. That's up to the Grabowskis. Um, that would be up to the Grabowskis. But okay. like I said, we're moving. The, we're going to move the concert series out of there. Okay. Before we move it to these guys, what else do we have to go over on this? <clears throat> I think that covered everything. It's really the it's yeah. really the lower level approval for the prep kitchen yeah. and the outdoor seating, and they're doing the kitchen. They're, they're shrinking the inside. How big? How many seats at the bar? Um. Fourteen. Okay. Okay. Before these guys come up, are there any other questions? Okay. You want to have your ten? Yeah. If, would you like to? Sure. Ask any questions. Yeah, we always said the ten commend five minutes of fame. Sorry. Hope there be samples. Just right. saying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Chip Grabowski and my son's Jake here. We're representatives of Harvest. Um, we're about to start our 27th year. Um, we're family and operated. Uh, my wife and I started back in 1996. She's just a little shy of her master's in wine, so she handles all the beverage program for us. Uh, and then my three children are actively involved in human resources, CFO. And, uh, but uh, we've been at it 27 years, Lord willing. Um, we started uh, in uh, Berkeley Heights, New Jersey. Uh, we've grown to uh, 13 locations uh, from Princeton. Um, we have three restaurants down in Princeton, two of which are on uh, Princeton's campus, of which one of them is Roots Ocean Prime, which is what we're uh, bringing here 
and Darien. Uh, and then we move uh, up north all the way to Ridgewood, uh, uh, New Jersey. Um, we have about uh, now, uh, again, Lord willing, about almost a thousand people that work uh, in our organization. Um, we're an employee first organization. I know that may sound unusual to people, but we're employee first, guest second, um, because we feel we take care of our people, um, they'll take care of, uh, of the guests. Uh, we normally uh, plod when we're looking to build restaurants. We don't, it's not like we have an agenda to open up a restaurant a year, three and five years. Um, we really study where we go. Um, we've been looking in Connecticut for two years, uh, from Westport all the way to Greenwich. Um, came to Darien, fell in love uh, with the building that uh, the Glassmeyers built there. It's a spectacular building. It looks like a building I feel that Harvest would build it, it itself. Um, meeting the Glassmeyer family and David, um, it was, you know, you have people that are aligned as it relates to quality. Uh, it looked like, a, it looks like a perfect fit for us. So um, we, we get very involved in the community. We like to be involved in the fabric uh, of the community. Um, I would share with you probably a lot of the communities that we're in are very similar uh, to Darien from what I've seen from afar. I have a lot of friends in the area. Um, so um, we're uh, real excited and, and feel that we could help uh, uh, in the community and give a great place uh, for people to dine. I, I know that some of the comments about um, steakhouse or high end, uh, I, you know, we do um, in Princeton, for example, in downtown Princeton, we may do five or six hundred people uh, in our lunch period on a Saturday and Sunday. Uh, how, many our, how many seats at that restaurant? About 170. So this is this is a total of two ten. Yeah, differently though, because uh, I do want to comment about. I mean, I'm a big turntable guy. Yeah, no, turn I, I do want to. I do want to comment, and I think we touched on a little bit. I, again, I'm only sharing you with, with my wisdom. I'm not saying it's gospel, but um, traditionally, um, uh, outside dining and inside dining definitely changes. I, I've been in front of a, a lot of zoning and planning boards. And um, it's never observed that uh, outside seasonal dining is in the, in the guest count, if you will, because it is seasonal. Uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's from May to maybe October, but in May to October, how many days does it rain? How many days is it cold? So uh, it's never been observed to us that that's recognized in a seating capacity. I'm just, I, I share the lead, but it's, it's your, you know. In, in my world, I do this all the time too. I used to do more, we always cut inside and outside. Okay. Because that's what the restaurant operators do, and then at lunch, yeah, you know, you do five hundred lunches. That means you got to turn the tables, you know, in a hundred seats five times. That's yeah. mathematically we, we not possible. We start we start there in, in Princeton at eleven o'clock, and and normally that'll run almost till four o'clock. Uh, we'll do those coverage. But well, my point to you more is that um, we do a lot of lunch service, and uh, I think we meet the needs of all people. I don't I don't think uh, it's just considered as a high end. I think our price points. If you look, uh, are competitive within the marketplace. Uh, you know, sometimes I even look and think like it's more expensive. Sometimes when you're going to a deli, if you look, uh, we're serving in, in, in as some of our light shaded. So I just share that with you uh, as well. But um, I, I uh, um, would love to open to your questions. I, you know, I'm, I'm a yeah, sure, absolutely. I'm a son of a marine, and he said, you know, he always told me, Chip, you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. So do a lot more <laughs> listening than talking. So. Uh, I'd love to get your questions. This is actually an outside shot of uh, um, Roots and Summit. Um, you can see our, I would share with you that our designs are always to stand the test of time. You'll never see trendy colors. We use brick, uh, we use stone, we use mahogany, uh, soft earth tone colors, because we always want to think about, uh, you know, what's this restaurant going to look like 30 years from now. So it's not that normal, but um, that's a, uh, sort of a staple that we do in the Roots concept. If you see the circular ends here on either end of the bar um, with the lamps, but um, again, all uh, soft tones. Um, we do uh, um, always have larger bars because um, we find that a lot of people um, dine at the bar. Uh, a, lot, a lot of our bars are you know, extremely busy with people uh, dining. We do have a, uh, I don't know if it upsets people or not, but we don't have a TV in any of our restaurants. Really? Um, we believe in the art of conversation and family and business and friends. Um, and I don't know how you all are, but if that had kickboxing on, my head would be, you know, <laughs> looking up there, uh, you know, looking at that TV. So 
Um, we do, you know, sometimes I hear about it, uh, but uh, it's just been a goal of ours to, to focus more on, on, on conversation. So you'll never find a TV in any of our locations. But again, this is a back to the roots feel. Um, uh, you know, we do a lot of, with murals as well. They'll be in this building. We try and bring local um, art uh, uh, to, the, to the concept or to the area that we are. Uh, we have one artist that we've worked with from day one. Uh, and he does well, wonderful work, but we usually try and bring local scenes uh, into, into the restaurants as well. Um, with regards to your other restaurants that are, you know, in similar demographic here, what, do you have outdoor seating at those too? And what's the ratio? I mean, this is kind of sort of 50 50. Yeah, I don't, uh, honestly, I don't think we would open a restaurant if it didn't have outside dining. I'm we, sorry? We would not open a restaurant if it didn't have outside dining. It's What's just, the ratio, though? Uh, normally, oh boy, great question, and it ranges. Uh, because I, I, I'm sure that it, this happened here as well, but in Summit, for example, in downtown Summit, they shut down uh, an entire block, and we had uh, um, 18 uh, tables to the outside. It almost creates a total, uh, di another dining room. In Princeton, right. they actually have changed the street from a two-way street, and they went through a whole renovation to get everybody on that downtown uh, a lot more outside capacity because it is very popular. Uh, you know, things ebb and flow, but the outside dining is, uh, has been spectacular um, and very well used. And every, and every community we're in, like Ridgewood, the same way, every, every community has expanded uh, on the outside dining because it's, it's just a, a, a need for it. So this one, you have 114 outside and 108 inside at peak season. I'm sorry? This restaurant, you'd have 114 outside. Yeah, I, and 120 inside. Minus 14, right? So it's 106 inside. No, I thought it was 120 inside. <coughs> with, with, no, with the bar, which is 14. Oh, oh, oh with the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're oh, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, this one, you have more seating outside than you do inside mm -hmm. yep, in that, July. That, that's not abnormal, um, but uh, again, um, it's the need, you know, it's just we're fulfilling a need. That, that's, uh, Very good. Um, I don't like to hear about empty tables a lot, so you making me nervous. <laughs> but uh, um, no, it's, it's we're fulfilling a need. But uh, again, um, the layout, I heard the, you know, back and forth. Uh, I, my understanding is, just so I want to make sure I'm clear, is that as it relates to the space now, we're actually expanding that there'll be more table and more table outside space. Uh, for uh, the public that is currently there now, today? Is that, I just want Correct. to make sure I am, yeah. I was getting a little confused, right? So, um, and by the way, the last thing um, that we want to do uh, is come in as a restaurant and upset a community to something that they, you know, that they cherish. So I don't want to live in that pond. So uh, um, we can study that uh, to more degree and look at it, but that's the last thing uh, we want somebody to be as upset with us coming into a community. Okay. Any questions for the um, restaurant no. tour? Great. Thank you, sir. No, I appreciate it. God bless. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the, the last thing, just relative to, to parking, I know there's a shared parking lot and a public parking lot. It's just we're, we're doubling the size of the seats and tables and capacity. Can we have some comment on the, what the parking capacity is there? The parking authority manages the parking as it always has. Um, this uh, development had, I'll, I'll see if I can pull up the map. I mean, I get it, people can walk from the office building across the street at lunchtime, because the, and then at night, the train station parking lot, which is right there, is most people are hopefully home from work yeah. by 7.30. And they okay. have dinner reservation at 7.30. When Penny, applied for this and was approved originally. How many apartments are in the two buildings combined? How many apartments? Yeah. Ten. Ten. Ten total? Is it five and five? No. Two on top of 20 and eight on top of... Two on 20 and eight on top of 14. Okay. Eight's got two levels and a bigger footprint <clears throat> than 20. 20 is only one apartment level. And how many on how many on say parking parking spaces are there today? None. There are oh, there, this there whole are. area here was originally part of the land. 
it's been conveyed over to the town as a finished parking area. These spaces along in here have an easement for municipal parking. And then this part over here, I, I'd have to check, but this is another row of municipal parking here. Um, I but believe what happened was we... The we, tenant spaces are... In yeah, the but the, it, yes. there's a sign that says tenant, apartment, tenant parking only. Yes. Along the brook. Yeah, that... Yes. Oh, and the point back, to it, Chad, please. The, back the here. retaining wall, right there. Okay. Those, right. those ten spaces are for the tenants. When the town got, got the land for Penny, Penny said, what should my tenants do? Right. So the town put up the signs in that back row for the tenants. And, there's probably and then there. the town changed Grove Street lot, you may recall recently, yep, yep. to two or three hour. Right. So generally the Grove Street lot, which is to the upper right of building one, is Up where Bob's here. laser yep, is, yep. is two to three hour parking throughout the day. I think, I think that's what it is. Up until like six o'clock at night, right? Uh, yes. I don't think they enforce it after. And yeah, right, it's, it's not enforced. Yeah, I get it. So that parking lot, which is used you know, sometimes by employees, sometimes by shoppers, is generally, every time I've been there, there's spaces to be found. I just want to be able to make sure that if, if we're going to approve this, we have a finding that says there's plenty of parking to accommodate the restaurant. Because yeah. the last thing he wants is a restaurant where a guy has a six day reservations driving around for 20 minutes trying to find a parking space. Right. That, that's the Yogi Berra rule. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's so crowded, nobody so goes there anymore. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, but this, uh, just to get back to this, between owning the fee and I believe these spaces are on easements, this was all part of the approval when Penny built the two buildings yep. in the plaza and all that. So in addition to that, uh, sometime after this was built, Penny actually went and had the power lines put underground up Brook, Brook Street for some distance, which, I mean, she's really, over the years, dressed up this part of town. Before, there was a body shop back there and oh, yeah. not, not so good looking. Five old run-down houses and stuff. So, that, I mean, she's really okay. worked at this over the years, and I think it came out pretty nice. And the, the last one I want to make sure we get on the record is when they put in, I always screw it up, water, salt, flour. Flour. The bakery. <laughs> right, the bakery. The, the Mr. Genevieve Sr. helped design the flu so the whole maybe not, did not smell like a bakery. And no, they're no longer baking there. Okay, so the this, so this restaurant is <laughs> going to have a similar kind of system. Remember, when, when that came sure. in the last time, yep. they said that the system was from the... Um, World Trade Center or something. Well, this this one, um, the building was designed with the, the venting system. The venting system in mind. So that part's easy, and then it's just state of the art hood and exhaust system with the scrubbers and you know the usual sure, coal and all that stuff. The usual stuff. Um, okay. I would just note that in David's 1020 project, you just don't smell anything outside when 1020 is cooking. So right. it works. It but you did works. smell it at Chuck's Steakhouse, which is the one. Well, thing. Chuck's was back in the 60s, and that's on another hole. Correct. It's okay. not there anymore. Um, um, any other questions you, uh, before we move on? Oops. Okay. No question. I'm ahead of myself here. Yep. Additional okay. items. We talked about the basement space. We talked about the hours of operation. We just got done talking about the uh, kitchen exhaust. We have to finish up with the ARB. Um, and obviously the health department and the liquor control Com commission are going to weigh on heavily on this and then we talked about the board of selectmen so that's uh that's our presentation and i'm not sure where to go from here the i would uh, open up to the public the uh oh sure but the uh tenants obviously they like to get some indication um of where the commission's headed on this, where the issues are, and also we can address them uh, and, and hopefully get an approval and then finish up the rest of the uh, pending application. So, yep. and just one more thing. So, we have demoed the space. If you ever buy there, let me know and I can give you a tour. So, we're, we're ready for the next step. Fantastic. Yeah. Th thank you. Yeah. Okay. Would anybody in the general public like to speak to this application? 
Yeah. I know there's a wine dealer back there someplace. Yeah. Please um, come. We have to come up to, um, state to the your podium. Name for the record. State your name and, and interest for the record. Hi. I am Sheila Quinn. Second. Welcome. Um, what, I where do you this, live, Sheila? What? Where do you, you live in town? Yeah, Camp Avenue. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, I was waiting for this to happen that melting pot closes and somebody like this gentleman comes in and does something really nice for dairy and I mean I didn't know that this was going to be spoken about I have to be in the industry and why can't dairy and be like a destination place for a great restaurant that's all I have to say Fantastic. would anybody else like to speak to this application okay um, Anybody, anything else outstanding? No? We're, we got everything, right? So we can take a motion to close. Entertain a motion to close? So, um, just in, they wanted to get a clue about where we were all kind of standing. I don't know when. I mean, we could wait until it's a general meeting and we can uh, deliberate. Or <coughs> you could make a comment now. You can, you can if you want to. Because <laughs> I have the floor. All right. Yeah, you go right I ahead. was just thinking, and I, I know we, we don't negotiate with applicants, but I do know applicants sometimes get suggestions about how things might go down better. And, and as I'm looking at this, I would, I would really like them to free up the six tables at the southern and Grove Street end um, uh, of the uh, current public space. And... Uh, I really think we might be doing them a favor because if there's a rain shower that comes pretty quickly, they're going to have to be moving a lot of tables very quickly. And if they, they could live without those six, I suspect. But make them available right off of Rose Street uh, and get into the fountain if folks want and otherwise sit around. So that that's the kind of thing that would okay. George, ease, you're talking the, about ease these. the process for me. Yeah. Are you talking about these here? No. No, no. The, the, this, the, the, six the, right, the six in the front. It's actually yeah. four. Four under four, the fountain four, and the two next to it. Yeah. Yeah. And those. And I, mean, I, I, think I would add the two smaller ones to the uh, west. I, I think. But aren't those I, as of right? To, uh, to the west. I think what, what you may want to think about is yeah, at lunchtime, instead of making the dividing line, you know, the 50 yard line going east and west, maybe north it goes south. north and south. East, west, south. Well, but but that, that's. Uh, left, right. I mean, seriously, left, right. We're not better off doing left and right yeah. because yeah. Yeah. What, we were, what we were trying to do was, you know, preserve tables and seating for the other businesses. We thought about that, but I think the, the baker would go bananas if we do that. So do what? If, we, if, you, if you were saying make the dining area this half, right? Because oh, the right. people that we have come from them, we don't. We wanted to always leave. Um, open tables in front of the other businesses through through the through through dinner time, to dinner time. So that was the logic of it. Well, I, I was just suggesting not claiming what I think are the southerly or the, the, the bottom f four, six yes, tables. correct. Those six tables. Over here. No, nope, don't include those two because you already have Bingo. Exactly. These four. Six. And the two next to it. Yep, Aren't right there. there. Two, two more to the left? Outside of the public space. Yep. Yes. Yes. One, yes. Two, one, two, three, four. No. No. no, 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 one, no. Two, three, four, one at a time, six. please. Correct. Nope. Correct. Nope. Those four <laughs> to the left of those four sure, are too good. little. Those two. These yeah. guys are one, two. There you go. Okay. Those two. Those two and the other four is what I was talking about. Oh, leave those open. At, Make, leave those open to the public. At lunchtime or well, at lunchtime, right? All the time. <clears throat> All the time. So people from Uncle's Deli can go sit there versus sitting along. Right. It, I mean, it, it, it gives direct access from Grove Street to the fountain, yeah. gives a little extra seating space, uh, I think. Uh, but then at nighttime, if these become used by roots people, then you've got this sort of awkward mixing. You know, you've got roots, public roots. Well, recall, I did exclude the two we, on the left. We, oh, these, those two. Right. Yeah. So it would be... These would all be roots at night? Not, not those two at the bottom. You're not saying exclude these six. Correct. Yes, six. Correct. Which you one? You'd only have the one weird one on the corner. One weird one on the corner? Mm -hmm. um, it seems awkward. 
Would yeah, I, 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 I honestly, I honestly don't see the benefit to the town or the public by doing that. All you're going to do is you're going to have someone eating their uncle's deli sandwich right next to a guy that paid 45 bucks for a steak. Like, the, the oh, landlord it? doesn't want to do that. They're not going to... I mean, it, that's the it, choice for the landlord. Right, but it declasses he, he, he's, he's making his... He's I get, making this, I get this yeah. yeah. Okay, that's... that's any, uh, any suggestions, Adam, from you? Oh, thank you. Yeah. You done? Yeah. Any suggestions at all? I could... <clears throat> to me, I'd like to see that the whole centerpiece of this is the fountain. So if you're a random person that's walking through in the middle uh, at five o'clock in the afternoon and you get off the train just from New York and you're coming here and somebody says, oh, let's go meet at Grove Street and have a glass of wine outside. At night, now you can sit right by the fountain. There's dogs there. It's, I get it at 8.30, it's different, but at five o'clock, you're saying the fountain is totally off limits to basically anybody who wants to be there. I don't know that that's right, especially because it's already restricted as public space right now. So I could see a world where, you know, maybe the seating is tiered, and if you find you need more, you can come back, or some way to protect the fountain, because that's the whole centerpiece of it. And if you're going to tell somebody, well, you could come, and you could sit off to the side, and you can look at the fountain behind a bunch of people that are eating, where six months ago you could use the fountain, and it was set up by some prior board, as public space, and now, sorry, it's not public anymore because, you know, we just want to put in a restaurant. That's a little more difficult in my mind. Well, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, I think the alternative is maybe to something that Commissioner Netter, I believe, said earlier, you know, move the public plaza so it's alongside the fountain, move the public plaza here, or maybe the public plaza is you know, some portion of this area and across the front of this building, you just relocate it entirely. But I, I, I really it's not sincerely enough. don't think that's in the public interest. I really think what we're proposing, when you reflect on it, is, is more public space during the hours where more people are using this. I mean, I'm like one of the only people I know who will go with my wife and get a glass of wine or would go and get a glass of wine at the Milky Pot and sit here because it's so beautiful. Nobody really did that unless we had those concerts. Um, well, but under I think theory, somebody could get a glass of right. wine and go sit in the public seating, I think. I don't know if that would be a problem for you or if the Liquor Commission would be upset with that. but Because it has to be sort of a controlled yeah. environment. But, but you can go get your glass of wine and sit in a root seat. I, if you yeah. want to get a glass you're of wine patron. at the restaurant, yeah. you're supposed to stay on the restaurant right. premises. It's really a question for Chip and Jake. I mean, could someone come off the train, get a Absolutely. glass of wine, and sit at a table Absolutely. for an hour before? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, what, in your scenario, would they be going to, like, Sipsters and getting a bottle of wine and then... Well, most people tend to congregate around the fountain. I mean, I've got kids and a dog, and they're, the second you go there, they're at the fountain. We were there the other week when it was 80 degrees, and we got ice cream, and we ran there, and guess where everybody sat? Right at the fountain. And it was 6.30 at night, and there was 15 people there because it was 80 degrees in April. And now you're telling me that those people in that whole event, that never can happen again. Well, but I would point out that that night that you did that, the Gopher Park was closed because of our construction. Yeah. That will be open. That's true. No, I, so, I get what you're saying. I mean, yeah, it's, I get it, but well, that's, same, that type of thing is no same. longer here. Yeah, okay. And even at lunchtime, it's somewhat segmented because you could see somebody saying, all right, I got my sandwich, all the tables are taken, I'm going to go sit on the fountain, and then somebody comes and says, no, no, you can't sit here because I'm serving this table right there. It, it's like, well, you know, this is the fountain here. It's been the fountain for 10 years. Mm -hmm. I've sat here every day for five years eating my sandwich every Thursday at lunchtime in the summertime. Okay, I, as I, I try to say, I know having been down these roads a lot, you're always going to please some people, and there are always going to be yeah. some people who are disappointed by certain things. But I feel like I'm a walking focus group. I think you and your roles end up being walking focus groups, whether you realize that was going to happen to you <coughs> or not when you agreed to go on this commission. But, you know, what I am confident of, and that's why I'm a strong advocate for it, is that people in Darien want a fine dining option run by a group like this, and they want outdoor seating. And so we just have to try to find the balance. And, and I mean, we did our best to come up with what we think is providing more when it's most in demand, 
and then creating a really exceptional dining experience when you know people walk up to buy a group like this. So I'm, I, we are open to suggestions. I think we just have to also think about, and I've made this mistake before, I know, and I admit it, sometimes things are easy to kind of lay out on a piece of paper sitting in, a, in room 206, and then there's the practical reality of what happens when you open. And I just want to make sure that we don't create awkwardness and discomfort because, you know, the Grabowskis don't want to have to tell people to leave tables either. You know, there's, as Chip said, he doesn't want to come to town and be the guy that took the plaza. No, I mean, that's the same exact thing that happened to me in Europe, and it happens all the time. I mean, I was in Bari, and they kicked people off tables because that was for the coffee shop. Um, Amy. I think, um, in reality, we don't live in a two-dimensional plan view. We live in flow. And like an air traffic controller, there's going to be a lot of demand that comes in and out of this space. And I think this is a good solution to dovetail to the demand that we already have in the space and the lapses that we have in space. So I think overall, net net, this is great. Okay. These will all fit, right? You measured it out. What's that? Mm -hmm. These will all fit. <laughs> tight now. We have, we have a size. We can pick the table properly. And it's tight we're now, and you're going to talk about adding a lot more tables we're now. We're not going to make it uncomfortable. The Grabowskis are not going to, this is a class operator. They're not going to create an uncomfortable dining experience. And you can look at the space, the layout in the actual restaurant. There's a lot of flow, a lot more flow. I don't know yeah. if you went into the melting pot, but it was like yeah, a one confined time. maze. Yeah. You look yeah. at their design, and it's... Oh, it's really nice flow People will go to that bar. We, we would want the yeah. flow to remain People aren't going to grab a drink and go outside. <coughs> they're going to go to that bar. <laughs> this was... They're going to go to that bar. One, yeah. one last thing on, on the site plan. I want to show I'm reading this right. Can you go to that 14A again? Are those operable windows? My eyes are shut. I can't really read it anymore. Uh, yes. Uh, this bifold curl, door, curl. entry door. Yes. Resident entry door. Are you yeah. talking here? <coughs> these, are, these are operable. Doors, yeah. Yeah. These are operable. Uh, this is operable. These are operable. This is new. This is the new entry. And this, <coughs> is, not, this is not an entry. This was closed off. Yeah, yeah one, one, of the these is, one of these is new. So can you go to the other, go to one more page, Bob? Is this one Steve's referring to? Go to, one more, to the next page. So make sure we're on the same page. Where, no, go to... Your 14, your A14. That's it, right there. Yeah. It shows, you see the little arrows? <laughs> yeah. this. See, the, see up, if you can start at the top, they would just read what they say. It says bifold door up top. Yeah. Yep, bifold door. The next one down is entry. That's not an entry door. That's not accurate. No, there's, a, there's an exit door right there. Is there? Yeah. For the restaurant? Oh. Okay, yep. then the next door. Resident, Resident entry, lobby. So now, just, is that... If I'm coming home at 8 o'clock at night and going to my apartment, you're coming through that. I'm going to the restaurant to go to the front door. No, well, you're going in your separate entrance. Well, you, you walk through the, the tables. tables. Yeah, you walk oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's one in your apartments. Yeah. And then the next one says restaurant door. We're keeping That's that door? ADA, yeah, that has to stay for ADA access. Okay. This is, there's a grade change over here, so there'll be a step into this entrance that wouldn't work for ADA. Okay. And then next one's by a full door, by a full door. And those, and those are rarely open. I mean, the Grabowskis may have a different program, but that that opens to what was the bar area of the melting pot. So like those exist. Conference. Those exist today. They do. They do. Okay. I've never seen a bar. Open. Do you get the same thing at at um at um, bodega? Bodega. Different. There's two windows. Those are windows. Those are windows. Those windows. Are windows. Opens, yeah. But it's got a shelf. There's a, a parapet kind of thing. Right. This goes down to the ground. Okay. Okay, I think that's it. Um, thank you. Anything thank you. else? We're good? Thank you. Any motion to close? <clears throat> There's nothing from the fire department about closing off the door to the apartments that needs sign off for adding a restaurant in there. Just out of curiosity. They're not closing at all. No, there was. Well, adding tables in front of it. Uh, we did receive comments from the fire marshal. There was nothing. There was no comments in that regard. Perfect. Is that, that, that one of those pieces of paper that attaches? This thing. I believe the comments from the fire marshal were uh, relative to fire suppression and uh, the hood system the that right. yeah. is being proposed as part this of the restaurant. And yeah, proposed hood and fire suppression system, no other issues noted. That's it. Okay, great. Uh, Mike made the motion, looking for a second. Any makes a second, all in favor? 
Okay. Hearing is closed. Thank you. Um, when are we going to when are we going to debate Thank on this? You. Deliberate. Uh, on this? It depends on the commission schedule, whether you meet next week or the ninth or the sixteenth. Okay. So it's not. It's definitely not on the second. We may not end up meeting on the second. We have to discuss that. Okay. So we'll deliberate on this application probably on May 9th or after May 9th. Between now and then, I think you guys go to ARB and or the Board of Select. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to New Jersey. Thank you. Um, Okay, the next on the agenda is business site plan application number 24 AD, special permit, Rago Rig, Rag, Rag Steel. Um, Steel Corporation, Emilio's Brick Oven Pizza, 25 Old Kings Highway North, Good Wife Shopping Center, proposed to establish a new 1,000, well, the same size as the other one, 1,000. <coughs> 371 square foot quick service restaurant in this in the first floor space formerly occupied by clean juice this space is located within goodwife shopping center located on the southeast side of old of old kings highway north approximately 150 feet southeast intersection with uh, brookside road and is shown assessors map number 71 as lot 19 in the dc zone okay in our packet we have a narrative fred what do we got this one was submitted in conformance with uh, Section 1000 under the Special Permit Regulations and Section 1020 under the Business Site Plan Review uh, Regulations. Uh, as you mentioned, Steve, this is a proposal for a pizzeria restaurant, uh, Emilio's Brick Oven Pizza, to uh, take over the space that was formerly occupied by Clean Juice. Um, there was, of course, no uh, cooking associated with the clean juice uh, store. <coughs> the uh, new pizzeria uh, would need to install a hood and venting system similar to uh, the prior application that uh, the commission just heard. The application was referred out to the health department. We received comments back from them on April 11th. It was also referred to the fire marshal, he submitted comments for the record as well. Uh, the applicant is here this evening to uh, present the application and answer any questions you may have. Fantastic. Okay, Welcome. Thank you. My name is Sarah Steele. <coughs> this is my husband, Emilio Steele, and we're representing the Rag Steele Corporation. Um, we're a group of four uh, business partners. Um, my husband has been in the business since 1988. We've had several <coughs> successful restaurants and pizzerias in the Bronx and in Westchester. And uh, my husband and I are new to the Connecticut area. We've been residents of Stamford for the last uh, about two and a half years. And we've been looking around for a location where we wanted to establish our business. So we looked around in Greenwich and uh, we established that we thought Darien would be a good location for us. So we were excited to find a space that we thought would be a good fit. And um, we're just excited to bring our brand and to serve the community of Darien. Um, and we, you know, who doesn't love pizza, right? Who doesn't love a good slice of pizza? So um, uh, we plan to be sort of a mid midline kind of a, you know, take and go kind of a restaurant or pizzeria rather. Um, we'll provide delivery service and obviously the option to um, have a sit down option as well. And, um, you know, we have a standard menu and then we uh, hope to kind of provide a little bit of a different spin, artisan style, um, and a little bit like of an authentic uh, feel because, uh, you know, our roots are based in Italy. So we want to kind of give that real authentic feel and uh, our, and our his parents uh, will be cooking and helping us cook in the kitchen a little bit and kind of get those recipes just right. So we want to make sure that we have it just right so really you do feel that Italian, like you're really in Italy. Um, with a little bit of a map, modern flair. Little town outside of Salerno, Campania area, on the south side. Campania, all right, that's where that was in. Was Naples, it's about an hour there. and 45 minutes from Naples. Got it. Up in the mountains. Round and round. Wait, no, your, daughter, did <laughs> my, your kid studied in Spain? My kid yeah. studied in, in Italy. Italy. 
We were at Bari side, but uh, Bari, yes, sure. Bari I and Florence. Said Bari. That's what I said to my husband. Yes. Um, okay. Um, how many seats do you have in the restaurant? I'm counting four, 14. Is that about right or no? I think what is this we a put current, on the plans a good layout? Was, yeah, we, I, we saw in the plans that there was, um, I want to say 16 in the old clean juice space, so we kind of kept that. Um, so I think on our plans we put 16. I have it up. I didn't, wasn't able to print that, so I have that on my phone here. So We have, we have this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 that has um, floor plan actual of layout of how we plan to use the <coughs> space and lay it out. Okay, so so these they're faint. These are four tops. One, two. Yes. Did I see two, four tops and one two top. Correct. Yes, and then like there's then a counter. Sorry. Yeah, and then seating alongside the wall. Right where the yeah. old seating was on the other place. Okay. So that's four, four is eight. Right. That's 10, and then the counter stuff. Okay. Yeah, it looks like CS3 has one table, but FS101 has two tables. CS3 is old clean juice? Oh, this is old clean juice. Yeah. Ah. So these, it looks like these tables, or these counter seats are staying. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. okay. And you can faintly see in this one. Yeah, I see. Ah, okay. That's a table. And then yeah. north of that is another table. And then over by... Here's a table and clean juice that stays in the same spot. <coughs> that one. Because with regards to the number of seats, that's how we figure out the parking. Of course. It's the same issue, and I think there might be a parking issue over at, at the shopping center lately. Yeah, I think there may be a representative from UBS this year. Right. I, I thought I thought uh, fantastic. Okay. Um, <coughs> any other questions for the applicant? I have a Mother, not for you. I have no. more parking related questions. Now, now, my only question was deliveries. You said there's going to be at least one delivery vehicle. Where are they going to load up? Are they going to load up in the back rear, of the restaurant rear, the or the rear front of the restaurant? Be, yeah, that or would the probably be the easiest, you know, the rear exit and then just leave from that. From that so avenue. behind the building? Correct. Okay. Because that was one question I had is if they were to pull up in front. You know, that's kind of a fire lane, sure and would, yeah, yeah, it's no. not going to work because you're kind of in the corner there, Absolutely. right? Right. You're between the cleaners and the workout place. Where the old sweat. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of close to where the old um, runner's roost was. Yeah. So you're thinking possibly that way they don't have to park. They might just go to because you do have a back entrance. Correct. Because that's where you take the garbage out. It would be there the best to get, you know, go from that point. Is that loop one way? Go no, I don't think so in the back. I mean, no. certainly the representative from Goodwise can answer that question. <coughs> but how many, would you park the delivery vehicles there overnight? No. No? Okay. So, and how many delivery cars do you, how many do you want to have? I mean, you want to have six? Because um, you're going to be success, widely so. successful? <laughs> Rico's has got a gazillion of them. Yeah, it is, uh, being said, it, it, you know, it, it would be a, they're, they're driving their own vehicles, so they're bringing them home anyway. So it's not going to be a, a standard set vehicle for that business. So you stick this Domino's thing on the yeah. roof and you do it. Okay. And there's also, you know, Grubhub and all the plastic. Yeah, but you remember those plastic yeah. things? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But the Grubhub people presumably will come from the front, not the back. Right? They're not going to drive yeah, all the way right. around to they the back. Would, yeah, well, we would have to direct them to go to the back. I mean, that's gonna, this is a well, hard to get to back spot. I can see the delivery drivers, their employees are coming, yeah, that's no problem. Right, exactly. But like a Grubhub guy, he's gonna be parking probably out picking front. Up. You know, walking in, picking up, getting out. We'd have, to, we'd have to request that he come and pick up through the back. Yeah. Can you do that? And, uh, can I the, so. can I the think operator do that? I mean, I don't know if I can say You got Grubhub, you got Uber Eats, you got, yeah. what's the other one? There's another one, right? DoorDash. 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 yeah. At least they won't park. But wouldn't they just, I don't know, would they just park in the lot? 
Pete's mate, I don't know. And they, they just grab their stuff and load their car up? Just like they would park, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't recommend that they park in, in front, front in right. a fire lane. Like, no. absolutely not. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, I think the only concern is, obviously, that fire lane is used excessively for parking all the time yeah, now. Yeah, no, they can't. So as long as they're not going to park in the fire lane, I don't think it matters. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, yeah I wouldn't recommend Cause that. Because there's parking after, yeah. across, in the, that lot will be empty at night. Yeah, no. yeah it should be. I'm shocked to hear that. Mike, come on and okay. Um, there has been reports of parking issue at the at the shopping center um, from tenants in there. I guess those are really on the other side of town. So if the gentleman from um, um, Ursa Bill can just speak to that, that'd be great. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I'm Stefan Rapalia from Ursa Biddle. Fantastic. Welcome, sir. Thank you. There's just been reports of parking issues among tenants and neighboring businesses, like the, the I guess, the um, pizza parlor that's across the way inside the ice rink, and then the tenants on the side where the fitness center is about mm -hmm. dedicated parking, not dedicated parking. Do you know anything much about that? Um, I can say that we almost never have complaints from tenants about parking. Uh, actually, I mean, I know Darien is a very high parking requirement, but there's more than five spaces per thousand square feet at the shopping center, which right. is a very yeah. good number for a community shopping center. Um, so our in your community shopping center, you don't have these five spaces are for, like I go there all the time and I don't see, hey, these five spaces are for this pizzeria, these five spaces are for, you know, the tennis, you know, no, for. In, in general, and, and we own, um, about 80 shopping centers in yeah. the in the metro area, but we're based in Greenwich and mm -hmm. we're concentrated in Fairfield County. You know, I, I lived in Richfield until a year ago and now I live in Woodbury, Connecticut and I work in Greenwich every day. We all know these properties, right? Um, we re very rarely give dedicated parking spaces to anyone because it creates problems among the tenants as they fight yeah, for those yeah. spaces. Yeah. Our big anchor tenants like Stop and Shop at this center sometimes have spaces that they dedicate for like pickup but that's it okay so because i just happen to notice some new signage that's there on the on the side um that's you know that I, that's new and i was just curious if that's because you're dedicating spots to uh, i'm not sure what signage you're referring um, to on the side there by where the combine um fitness areas there's some signs that you know say hey you can't park here unless you're here for this well we have we do have signage in the center that says parking for tenants customers and employees only I don't know if that's what you're referring mm -hmm. to yeah I've seen those how do you police that well we generally don't need to I mean the the as I said this is a pretty large parking field and of we course we have parking problems frankly the only times that are and we have a property manager who's there on site not yeah. every day but it's it's in her rotation so she's the real expert and she reports back to us about parking issues. And, and we had a conversation because she knew I was coming here today. And she said the only time we've had to tow people in recent memories during a couple of hockey games, I think when Darianne was playing New Canaan. Um, and, you know, it's probably a lot of New Canaan people coming in and filling up our parking lot. But the bottom line is in a, on a regular basis, we're not finding that we need to tow people. And when we do need to tow, it's only because of a, a big event and tenants call and say, hey, look, there, there's no spots for my customers to park. But see, that, that's the question. How, I mean, I, yeah, you have signage. If there's 200 parking spaces open and, and, and a guy from New Canaan parks in, in front of the old Tanga and goes across the street to the um, ice rink <coughs> or they have a bus there, why are you towing cars? We, we, again, we very rarely do. Um, we, we only tow in a situation where the parking lot is full and our tenants are complaining. Um, and then we're trying to identify people who are not using the parking lot for the benefit of our store owners. So, you know, that's an art, not a science. Um, you can say that about pretty much every parking lot anywhere. You know. Our center has a little bit of this, but other centers have it much worse, including in our portfolio, where you have commuters come and try to take advantage of a parking lot. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm not going to tell you that we, you know, we have it down to an exact science that, you know, this person's been there for 12 hours and they're clearly not in a store and we're going we're gonna to have to tow that car. We just do our best to monitor the lot for the benefit of the tenants. 
Okay, because I'm just trying to make sure that these guys have a tenant. If someone goes to the hockey game and they're from New Canaan and they want to go to the pizza parlor after and they come out, their car's towed. You know. Yeah, but the, but the purpose of the lot is not for someone to go to the hockey game and park for three hours and then pop into the pizza place and say, oh, I was a customer of your shopping center. What That's about abusing, you do, what about That's abusing the, the lot. What about you do the other way around? I mean, it's still, it's abusing the lot, right? I mean, wouldn't you say that if that happened to any parking lot that's intended for the benefit of the, of the stores, that if somebody says, hey, I'm going to park here all day, use the train, come back and get a cup of coffee, I'm a, te I'm a customer of the shopping center. No, I 100% I, I get it. It's the but same I, idea with the hockey I 100% get it, but there's the Palmer Shopping Center and Federal Shopping Center and Stop and Shop that was in, the, in North Heights town, yep. they never tow any cars. Yeah, again, we, we get almost, reports that we people from the Canyon get the cars towed. That's really something that we don't we try to we don't like that in Darien. We believe me, we don't like it either. I mean, the, frankly, what good does it do us, right? The, there's no benefit to us of having angry residents of a town or angry customers. We only do it if we feel like we need to because our tenants are complaining. Okay. So that's when it happens. Because it, 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 what the report that got back to me was when they were towed cars, I'm banning. I'm not. I'm never going to stop and shop again. I mean, look, that's obviously unfortunate. We don't want that to yeah. happen. I mean, I will say that we it did. Was a Facebook after, chain in Darien. After the first hockey game this winter where we had a problem, um, our property manager talked to the rink operators and attempted to work out a situation where we could dedicate a portion of our lot during a hockey game where there would be appropriate security monitoring the use of that lot. And the rink managers weren't interested at the time in doing that. So when the second hockey game happened and there was a free-for-all, there was even a, an RV parked in our lot taking up six spaces and tailgating. That so, was a new cane of bus. I heard of it. Yeah. So, I, I mean, me. you know, the bottom line is under extreme circumstances, we, we felt like we had to take some towing measures to protect mm -hmm. our tenants. But that's the... That, Excuse me, that's the only time we would feel like we need to do that. Even though there's 200 vacant spaces, parking spaces? In the parking lot? Yeah. I mean, if there were 200 vacant parking spaces in the lot, and, and our property manager says the lot was really full, and she's, she has photos of it, um, I doubt we would be towing. But if we're getting calls from tenants, and all the parking spaces in front of the tenant's stores are filled, and our property manager can verify that, then you know it's possible we would have to tow again. We just again, there's no, there's no desire on our part to tow. There's no, we don't. It's a lose lose for us. All right, 100 percent. I'm trying to make sure that people want, don't want to boycott your shopping center and hurt <coughs> your new businesses. Yeah, I, because I mean, they know they're going to go and they get the cars towed. Well, I, your point is it's, taken, it's but a, again, it's you're a preaching black to eye the eye town. It's a black eye on stop shop. It's a black eye on. on I mean, it's the tenants that, that ask that us. It's the tenants that ask us, not not our initiative to say, "Oh, we're going to go." You know, let's let's get these guys. Let's go. Let's go tow them. The it's last, not how it works. We really need their people willing to walk a little farther. I have never seen the entire lot filled with me neither. Cars. They may have to walk a little farther than we're yeah. used to, but I, I mean, my so my father was the one guy when we went shopping. He was parking in the farthest spot of <laughs> the stores, and we were like, "Dad, why are we parking over here?" But don't to your point, nobody, nobody does that. <laughs> nobody does that. <laughs> but it, I mean, I don't think combine and, and tennis that are on that side facing the, the hockey rink are open at six o'clock on a Saturday. Night. I, all I can tell you is we we don't want to tell, right? You're the only landlord in town that tows. Um, I can't speak to that. I can. Okay. And I just did. All right. So I would just take it in advisement. Don't hurt your tenants by towing cars. Uh, we, we, that's the last thing we want to do. But if our tenants call us, if, if they say, look, there, nobody can park here and come to our restaurant, our pizzeria, well, then we have a, an obligation to protect our tenants, too. So, again, we don't want to tow. It's the last thing we want to do. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> any other questions for anybody? No. Um, as long as he toes the mechanic cars. Right. right. That's the, what's that? As long as he toes the mechanic cars. Just look for the other system. Stick it on the back. The red car. Get him out of there. It, there's a story about that. I've heard some other time. But uh, there was okay. a change of pedal. Okay, you're good? I'm good. Yes, yeah, you're any, still on. Would anybody in the audience like comments. to speak yeah. to this application? May I ask one question? Of course you can. So on the plans, I know that it's asking for 16 seats. Like, is it unreasonable if we wanted to ask for 18, or is there? It makes a whole fiasco. I'm just asking because obviously to have for to come friends. back for two more <laughs> seats, 
Yeah. I'm just asking, you know, because um, we were in the space this afternoon and we were like, oh, we might be able to put another table here. So I know it's not just on the, the record, plans. I, I count 18 right now. You are right, counting no, 18? I count ten, ten, how many at the bar? Um, I have uh, 1, 2, 3, right. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I have 15, 16. So technically, if I move the, t the one that's in the very front, the two-seater, and I move it, I added another. I just obviously don't want to do something out of compliance, so I just want to know, because you'll come back and you'll check, and I just want to make sure everything checks out. Um, yeah, but the, 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 the other rule was, was 16 or 12? That was strictly for outdoor seating. Right. Anything more than 16 outdoor seats requires addition, an additional parking requirement. But for internal, it's based on square footage. Right. Yeah. Right. Because if bet you nickel, you're also going to want the landlord's going to let you hopefully um, put tables outside too. I, and I have to. I spoke with um, I forgot his name, but someone at the ARB. I know that's a whole thing with the signs and everything. We will go for an additional review for a few tables outside, okay. um, but obviously during the very cold months and such. So am I limited just at the 16? I'm you know I'm just no. You're not. Take you're 18 not. now. Oh, yeah. Would, we'll make, we'll change you, it to 18 now. Thank and then you. Put a provision that they can put out to receive. Thank you very right. much. Subject I appreciate to that. Okay. Great. Couldn't hurt to ask. Thank you. I appreciate you're that. Thank you. Anybody in the audience like to speak to this application? Amelia, you should keep her. She, she got you four more seats. Um, no one in the public wants to speak to you. Something okay. looking for a motion to close? Mike makes a motion. Adam makes a second. All in favor? Yep. Okay. We'll get you an answer back probably in a couple of weeks. All righty. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no. Now we're going to have to report you to the ethics. <laughs> what she said. So that we can all now come and have pizza. Oh, that's exciting. Go for some pizza. I'm kind of hungry, actually. Oh, Steak and then the pizza. I know. I was, I was, I and the only downside is let's um, get a third pizzeria in that little corner of town. We're up to uh, five past four. Conan. 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 Coastal site. The next item on the agenda is um, Coastal Site Plan Review Number uh, 373, Landfilling Recruiting Application Number 547, Marissa uh, Pisanti and Pisanti Perkins at 5 Content Place. Content. Content Place. Proposal to construct a new addition <laughs> to the northwest side of an existing residence and construct new retaining walls with associated recreating of the property and perform related site film activities within a regulated area. The 1.45 plus minus acre subject property is located on the east side of Canoe Trail at the southern corner formed by its intersection with Salem Streets Road and is shown in the session of map number 62 as lot 72 and 73 in the R1 zone. This is a house that's going to be renovated on, I, I call it Salem Street, but it's, yeah. they call it something new. Um, to, what do we got, gentlemen? Yeah. This one's submitted in conformance with Section 850 of the regulations, landfilling or grading, and Section 820 site plan or coastal site plan, uh, 810 coastal site plan review. Um, the application was uh, referred to Joe Canis of Tie and Bond. He submitted comments on the application dated April 13th. Uh, the applicant submitted a response to Mr. Canis's comments today. Um, those were emailed to you this afternoon. The application was also referred to Connecticut Deep. Comments were received back from that agency on April 20th. Uh, the proposed two-story addition on the south side of the existing residence of the property is approximately an 800 square foot footprint um, outside of the flood zone uh, and more than 100 feet from Long Island Sound. Uh, the applicant's representative Morgan Lister from the Dario Architects is here to present the application and answer any questions that the commission may have. But you sent us an email this afternoon on this application. Was that Joe Canis's response? I didn't. See the response of Joe Canis's letter. I didn't see mm -hmm. that. Mr. Canis's response was included in your packets. 
I got his letter, but did the applicant respond to that? Um, the applicant responded to Mr. Canis uh, and it was emailed to you this afternoon. Okay, that I didn't see, but okay, that's fine. I'm, Sir, welcome. I'm, I'm actually Chris Dodero, not Morgan Lister. Morgan, yeah. I'm the architect. Morgan works in my office. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you say your name and who you are and what you do. Could you spell your name? Excuse me. Uh, first is K-R-I-S-T. And then Dodero, D-O-D-A-R-O. <coughs> We're going to go with the theme tonight. We're going to change the application. We're doing a restaurant. <laughs> We're going to seating you, on the road. Are you 1,371 square the feet like the other two? Yes, identical. All right. So I do I have, have to... Uh, I do. <laughs> I don't know how to work it in, but uh, are you doing it on Canoe Trail or on uh, Conant Place? On Conant Place. Because that's nowhere near Canoe Trail, which is provided in the notice. Right. The, uh, uh, the, in, the in, our, our engineer from HK Associates wasn't, wasn't yeah. able to be here at hip surgery recently, at, I suppose. And oh, yeah, is that a typo? <clears throat> is that a typo? Mm -hmm. See that? In the text it says east side of Canoe Trail, but it's not. It's oh. yeah, we, content yeah. We place. Yeah, Right. Okay. Um, and before we get to the trip, <laughs> is this also your plan? Uh, which which one is? That? Um, I don't know. You got it today. <coughs> right. That's okay. Connecticut. On the bottom, it says place. Westport, Connecticut. Yeah, I'd switch that to Darien, Connecticut. Okay. Yeah, that's from the state for the uh, engineers. Okay. <coughs> All right, with that, right. with those <laughs> uh, household items cleaned up, uh, please go ahead and proceed, sir. Thanks Thank for picking you. that up. No problem. Right, so you have the, the narrative on, on, the, uh, on the proposal is, a, <coughs> is it a sort of minimal two-story addition. Part of it is one story as a connector and then the portion that, making it look like more like a story and a half. By, using it in the roof, a uh, simple attachment to the existing house. Uh, grading is um, very, very minimal. It pretty much just lands on the property. The downhill side towards the water, the, you can see in the 3D images, the building itself makes, comes down to grade essentially, makes its own retaining wall. And then there's a small portion to the right uh, if you're looking at it from the water side up that connects to the existing. So it's consistent with the, the wall there is consistent with the existing wall. This is actually held back from the existing, not extending as far. We have no terrace as part of this, so we're, we're really keeping it fill neutral. You're just excavating what's there and that's being removed from the site. There's a little portion of infill sort of a patio space between the proposed, it's the on site, but between the a proposed addition in the existing house. That may actually end up just being planted, really, and not, not a patio. That's sort of the straightforward. The calculations done by the engineer, uh, it's a simple retention system, picking up uh, roof, roof water and um, footing drains, which take it into a gallery system. Again, very typical concrete gallery system. Treats water, allows low, low volumes of water to infiltrate. The, the protests were very good, so in, uh, infiltration into the, into the soil is good. Um, typical overflow to those, again, there's just two sets of the galleries. Now, the typical overflow, this one has a, pipes, a, a pipe discharge to a riprap. The, there were comments from, from the town here, I don't know if that was from engineering, about just doing a level spreader. We talked to the engineer today, so perfectly fine to do the level spreader. We can have that on this augment and is any of the other conditions as part of uh, conditional approval here, conditional for the issues of the building permit on those items. He didn't want the rip up, he wanted the level spreader? I didn't see that. Yeah, it wasn't in the comments I came back. We, I think we may have noted it in the email, but I'm noting it here. Okay. This evening. But I'm much happier to I thought that was a good pick up on the town's part. Okay. Um, so it's a it's a big piece of property. We're doing addition to the left the left side of the house. Yeah, very much an oversized piece of property. Okay. okay. And we, then, I worked on this project back in 
back in uh, 2015 into 2016. And then it was a question on the, the, the bit of retaining wall. It's about 10 feet of it connecting into the existing terrace and then to the other side. We're, we're using the same detail on that wall that, that we used um, back six, seven years ago. If you're looking at the 3D images, the portion to the right where there's a bay window, that portion of wall was built then with the same detailing of the stone. Of course, there's out and there's a terrace there. Ours is all the way back at the foundation, but it's the same. There's a, a, um, a reinforced wall with the, with the stone in front of it, larger stone tapering up. It's slightly battered and a, a drain, essentially a footing drain on the inside to pick up any, which that ties into the gallery system. It's not very much. You have 10 feet on one side and maybe six feet on the other. How tall is the wall? Uh, the wall, so the wall from the grade point it, it, at the highest point is is uh, ten and a half feet. It's because there's three feet, which it, which is sort of in line with what's there. It's actually less than the other portion that's there to the right of it. It's 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 lower because the grade comes up over there. Okay. So, so that's at the highest wall. point. It definitely, there's when you're looking from the lower side, the candlewood side, you're looking up at. At the wall because the house you say kind of up on a hill. A little That's bit. right, yeah. Yeah. So it could it maintains that it maintains the same look. But we kept ours back. We do not have it out. We have it all the way back at the building. We don't do not have all the other portions have a large terrace, even a swimming pool. So you have the building, then a large terrace swimming pool, and then the wall, which pushes it out farther. As Down it drops hill. away, we're holding it back as tight as we can. The, the delta from to grade from grade to grade is only five feet. It's that you have three feet, then yours. So that's at the very tallest. On the side, as it goes to the left, it's taper even less than that. You're around to, we have the heights on there. It's, okay. it's set seven, six feet, seven feet, it's five. It's, and it's holding back there to the, to the, the building department. It's an engineered wall, it's over four feet, so the building department looks at it. it correct, yeah. Okay. And they've already approved, I mean, they approved it seven years ago. Great, and that was just that's added. It, right. Okay. Um, so on this side, Amy, any questions? George? Uh, just to follow up on Joe Cannes' comment that the fence there sewer is not shown, so is there a... Uh, it does. It ties system? into that manhole. So the that was a question on the list which we came back on. So sanitary ties into that manhole. There's a grinder pump in there that then gets the lift up and ties it into the, ties it into the sewer system at the street. Is it implicated in any of the new drainage? It's lines? not, no. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not because we're, we're protecting it. We showed a protection fence around it on the new plan, okay. and we're fine with that. We scoped it out already with the with the Fox Hill uh, contractors. Okay, cool. Thank you. Does it, you said it has a lift inside it? So is that no, it just, it brings it up. It's the mm -hmm. grinder, and then it ejects it. So. Okay, so it's not, it's nothing, it's nothing electric. No, correct. Mike? I'm good. Adam? Do we care to see a planting plan for this, or no? Sometimes we get them, sometimes we don't. It's not, it's not that extensive. So. It's not that extensive. It's not it's really not visible from the from the road anywhere. From the road anywhere, it's way down there. Yeah. Can, maybe it's a bit visible from the water, but it's not like it's pitching plant water. Uh, just asking. <laughs> We've seen it on small. It's a good question, though. Yeah. If there's somebody from the public that wants is here, but it's really only a few houses that go beyond that yeah. behind it. Um, okay. Otherwise, no. Okay, thank you. Um, any other engineers going to chime in? I didn't. Do you have Joe Kennis's? Do you have the response to this letter? No, no. The response? The response? I, I, I didn't. It came to me. I didn't see it. You guys got it. Yeah, we did. Uh, the response yeah, got, was submitted today. Yeah, um, correct. Yeah, I got I got this, this, and yeah, because the, the, the primary all all the information on the notes that needed to be answered were then on the site plan, the revised site plan. So those answered those questions. Then there's only the one on the calculations which you need, which we can submit. Okay. Um, so it's revised site plan is designed to send DCI form and operation maintenance plan. Site yeah, we, yeah, that, so that was all submitted. They're in the file. Here's the DCI form. Operation maintenance plan is here. I got that. Yeah. I just didn't see it. Thanks for taking care of that, by the way. It's it's such late notice. It was with our engineer uh, Sable. That's uh, okay. Would anybody in the general public like to speak to this application? 
The only thing I noticed here, guys, is this plan says Westport, Connecticut, not Dillon, Connecticut. So just make sure it gets fixed. Okay. Oh, yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. You haven't called a plan. Right, on the engineering, yes. Good pickup on that, thanks. A little thing it's to talk about. It's also on the uh, William Kenny Associates. Oh, it's also on William Kenny's? <laughs> Because most likely he, he took it from uh, In there. But he got it right in the. Uh, he got it right in the rear cup, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, with that said, intended motion to close. Yep. George makes a motion. Amy makes a second. All in favor? Thank you. Okay. We'll get back to you. Uh, unanimous. We'll get back to you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Next item on the agenda. Last one. Um, last but not least. Uh, Landfilling reviewing application number uh, five four eight. Um, I going to blow you first. Name. Um, Greg. 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 Boswitz at uh, 53 Camp Avenue proposed to construct a new retaining wall with associated regrading of the property on the south southwestern portion of the property to accommodate the expansion of the driveway area and perform related site development activities. The 0 0.34 plus minus acre subject property is located on the south side of Camp Avenue, approximately 110 feet east of a tennis section with Spring Grove Street and is shown as assessor's map number 8. As lots number 111 and 112 in the R13 zone. This is the part of Camp Avenue that goes up from from Quaid Street going uh, towards Weber. Not on the southern part. We did a house we did a house next door to it that had um, had all kinds of site issues too because it's on the side of the hill. Welcome, sir. Say your uh, name and good evening. contention for the record. Good evening, everyone. My name is Gregory Matuszkowicz. I'm living on the 53 Camp Avenue. Um, I would like to do, uh, actually we are living on the slope, so I dr our driver is just on the slope, right on the slope, so um, we would like to do like a retaining wall, so uh, this gives us a little bit more space to make a turn and leave the, leave the house, so we don't have to backward to the busy street, because uh, that's 53. It's a pretty busy street, so it's not safe to um, to make a backward. So we tried to do the fence once, but it didn't work. Every time our guests hit the fence when they try to leave. So if there's two cars on the driver, it's impossible to make a turn. You have to get out like backward. So our retaining wall we're planning to do um, is like about six feet tall and uh, eight feet wide approximately and um, it's gonna be on the same level as a driveway maybe a little bit higher so on the end of the on the uh, retaining wall we'd like to do some fence like maybe three feet fence so we would like to use like uh, uh, this A retaining wall black by Nicolac. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, every three courses they would like to put uh, and they have to put like a geogird and dirt. Say one more Geo geogird. Geogrid. Geo okay. So, uh, so basically the wall is going to look like <coughs> on the picture over here. Uh, this is from Norwood. It's about 12 feet. Our is going to be like a half of this and the fence above, and this is the top of the wall. They, they have a parking lot over there. Okay. So basically it's going to be the same look. I don't know if this is, this is the Nicolac, but it's a similar you know, you know that. Yep. So they're going to put like a met metal bars inside, a gravel, and a, a geocurve. Okay. That's how they explain it, how it's going to look like. Mm. 
So basically, that's it. And, uh, so, Commission members, if you've been to the site, you'll see that uh, the grade of Camp Avenue is about elevation 107. You have to go up, go up uh, the driveway here. As you can see, there's a curve in the driveway. The driveway parking area is about elevation 123, 124. Right. You're driving up 16, 17 feet yeah. to get up to the parking area. There's room for a few cars, but uh, it is very difficult to get in and out because you wouldn't want to back into Camp Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to find a, a way to turn around on at the top of the hill so you don't have to back down Camp Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what they're looking to do is bump out a little <coughs> bit, give them a little more maneuvering room at the top. So the, it's going, it's going west. What? Eight? That's the eight feet he's talking about. Correct. There's going to be some pushing out, if you will, to the west to create more back out space and turnaround space for vehicles. It pushes out the driveway area by a, about ten feet. Is that right? Yeah. Greg? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. this dotted line's now the driveway. Yes. Yeah. So I. I sketch this. I mean, I put this on the picture, so basically uh, blocking the, the wall be here, mm -hmm. and this is grass and the gravel and the black top. Great. So we have a little bit more space to back up here and make a turn. Okay. Because yeah. right now this, this slope starts from here, yeah. mm -hmm. so it's everybody are afraid to, to go farther than this point. Then they're going to fall into the hole. Yeah. It could happen. <laughs> Yeah, I got you. Do you have any 16-year-olds in your house yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, These are the, the commission in your package. You did get proposed sections with the geo grid. Yeah. These yeah. are sheets A101, A102, the site plans. These are in the file. Great. This is exactly what he's talking So the contractor I have, he says he doesn't need to use any machines and equipment. So I don't know if he will be available. But he's gonna dig out. He's gonna dig it out, isn't he? Why should? Yeah, but it's like the slope is like this, so he it goes has to down. just push a little bit. Push it back. Fill that angle of space. <coughs> but I'm not sure if you will be available for this project at this time. And we required to have any, you know, studies on the effects of the drainage to the down slope neighbor on this. Where will the water flow? Yeah. It's got to flow downhill to, yep. to yep. Camp Avenue. But has there been, are we, the, the applicant just undergrad. required to submit that? Yeah, a drainage study was not submitted as part of this application and is is uh, not required to be submitted as part of the application. It doesn't <coughs> exceed the um, minimum 1,000 okay. square feet of new impervious surface okay. for uh, to trigger that requirement. Um, from what I understand of the situation, the portion of the driveway that's going to be pushed out, the additional 10 feet that will be created will also not be paved. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So, and uh, up under the gravel, is, I mean, up under the grass is going to be gravel, so the water goes right. down to the gravel. So Lenny D'Andrea. Be better than it is right now. Lenny D'Andrea, an engineer from the engine serving and engineering, sent me a letter talking about just what Greg mentioned. The riprap system, which is gravel basically, yep. located at the bottom of the wall, will help collect Attenuate water. Attenuate the water and, yeah. and, and smooth out the runoff. So the water gets the right. water gets through the wall. Yep. To the downward slope. But is it getting like we just don't want it affecting the neighbor that's uh, I want to say Right. Yeah, Felipe. Yeah. yeah, the wall would be probably about 20 or more feet from the property line. 20 feet away. 20 feet or more. Okay. I don't exactly know. You're seeing a lot of water flowing down that hill. The water's going it, to. Is, is there an edge of the pavement? Is there a curb on the edge of the pavement now? Mm, not that I recall. Fred, do you recall? No, I don't, I, I don't think so. Right? So water can still go that way. Yes. 
Okay. Any other questions? No. Any other questions that you guys add? Would anybody in the audience like to speak to this application? Please. Come to, to the podium, state your name and address for the record, if you don't mind. Sorry, I had to wait too long. No problem. My name is Patricia Legere. I reside at 10 Spring Grove Street. I have a current application with the EPC Planning and Zoning and Building Department. I've already built the concrete block wall, but I have two other sets of boulder walls that have to be built. It's very extensive, my project. It involves a lot of spring, seven springs, all kinds of problems. But, um, Mr. Gregory, um, I just wanted to know in his project how many trees he has to take out. And we have major water problems on Spring Grove Street. I mean, it's like flooded with the smallest amount of rain. The whole street is flooded all the right. time. Remember We've been trying to get storm drains for like a million years, but that's a whole other issue. But um, I just wanted to know about the water drainage and also the number of trees. Okay. Um. So uh, we are we'll have to remove maybe one or two trees, and I'm gonna plant like maybe ten after we finish the wall on the top of the wall and on the bottom of the wall. Because the bottom of the wall is gonna be the walls. How the walls eight feet high? Is that right? Because it's coming to the side uh, of the hill. About six, eight foot. In the highest point could be eight. So you're gonna put the the, the trees on the opposite side of the wall, blocking yeah, from the neighbor side. Yep. You can only see the wall on the front side, on the house side, the driveway side, but not on the other side because it's built into a hill. Correct. Uh, Greg will never see the bottom of the wall unless he's down there cutting the lawn or raking leaves. The neighbor down below, Ms. Quinn, who's here, will see the wall. Uh, the parts that won't be planted in front of me. Okay. All right, thank you. Did we answer her? The, the I think question? we answered Ms. Legere's question about trees to be removed. Uh, there's trees to be protected shown on the plan. This is the, uh, it's the grading plan shows three big trees to be, four big trees to be protected as part of this. You can see yep. circles on those. There will be, uh, and they also show clearly tree to be removed. Hi, my name is Marie McCall. I'm 45 Camp Avenue. Okay. And I'm concerned about more water. Did, did you say there was water going to come down his driveway onto Camp Avenue? Well, it comes that it comes down that way today. Yes, it does. So it's it's not going to change. What I what I what I don't want it to do is to go down the hill to um, the stones. Yeah, to the uh, per stones and, and Mrs. Quinn's and Miss Quinn's house, which is the other way. I right. want to go down towards Camp Avenue. Right. Well, which is the way if, it, should if go. it went to their house, it would also come on to Spring Grove Street most likely, and I'm on camp, but my house is also on Spring Grove. Okay. So, you know, I'm concerned. I've, we've been flooded. So yeah, I did. Sure. I, I remember that. Uh, oh. But it's a good thing if it goes down the driveway, right? Right. Not really, because whatever comes down Camp Avenue comes into Spring Grove. So it takes a, a sharp turn because our driveway sits on a high side and the water pours off of Camp Avenue, even if it just rains. But the slope on that side of this property is down toward uh, the Quinn property and therefore, you, so I wouldn't think you'd want it going that way over their property. No, go down the no we wouldn't want it. Unfortunately, there's no way to stop it entirely. It's going to go someplace. Right. And it, I'm hoping it's not going to come into my basement again. Yeah. Yeah, no, I hear you there. Okay. I think you'd actually probably rather not go down the driveway because it's got more land to cover and mm -hmm. infiltrate. Okay. I'm not going to go down the asphalt because it's a good 
It's like going down a slide. Correct. And picking up velocity and great. And he doesn't he doesn't have any edging here currently, so I, I think it's I think it's kind of flowing the best it can flow. Great. Okay. Would anybody else like to speak to this application? Please. Hi, I'm Sheila Quinn at 51 Camp Avenue. Filippo Pistone, 51 Camp Avenue. Thank you, guys. So, I mean, the first thing I want to say is that I, I would like Greg to have the property he needs for his life. And nothing I'm saying for any other reason that but what I'm going to bring up has anything to do with him not getting what he needs. Yep. Um, but our house is directly under that slope, and our property is about four inches away from the wall that is in our property, which is the big retaining wall that goes across the whole, the whole 51 Camp Avenue, our yard. And then it really goes straight up. And a lot of trees have been knocked down. Um, the, they had it originally a fence up there, but they took that down and they moved it four inches from the property line right smack, you know, in our, basically in our backyard. So they have that fence. Then they put another one up, a partial fence, and then they did their whole property around the other side of their house. So there's a lot of fences going up and we got like this big thing right in front of our face and now we're gonna, we feel like what we're gonna have is no trees and we're gonna have this big cement wall and our patio is right there. Our whole yard and our whole inside of our house, our kitchen, our eating area is all looking onto that space. And we've tried to understand each other a little bit about this, these fences and walls, but we, didn't, we couldn't really communicate after a certain point because it, we didn't understand each other, I guess. But we are really concerned <clears throat> about what it's going to look like and how how much how where the land is where the land stops and the wall how much of that is it going to go up six feet that's what I, that's the question i was asking which part are you looking at say about up to 10 feet that we should be that's yeah. 10 feet yeah. out is this the grading plan so well, let me see can i see so this is how it looks like right now and uh, this is the wall like a, almost 16 feet wall. Proposed sections. This is going to be like this. And the top of the wall is going to be even with the, in, with the black top. Oh, so it's going to be all the yeah. way down. Yes. So it's not going to extend up higher. No. Okay. So, so we're still going to see your and cars uh, going yeah. in and out. And, uh, okay. Yeah. We, 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 we're going to plant, I mean, we will plant the trees. Okay. So you won't basically see the wall. Okay. But the wall is a concrete wall, or you going to have a no, stone it's a wall? Block. It's a concrete blocks. Oh, okay. So I have well, a that's picture. That's good to know. It's a univox system. system that looks. It's got. It's it's got um, like rock face to it, and it's a bunch of building blocks that put them together. But that's going to be green, something like this. Okay, it's still going to be. Uh, but the thing green is, green. our house is directly right under the slope, so there's no way to get away from it, and there's already a fence smack on the property line like there's no leeway we didn't get the customary two feet leeway to even plant anything for some reason so uh, i'll go ahead and show you quickly this was just today so This is from your patio, looking up. Yeah, but it's literally six. Our our backyard, our our wall, our doors to go outside. It's about six feet to the wall. Great. I'm looking at the same thing. So in addition to the six uh, feet wooden wooden fence, we're gonna have another eight feet wall or six or eight. Feet There's just a lot of fences and walls going up. Great. And right. we didn't I hear something about twenty feet? Our the at the top's not that short. Right. right. The, Right, correct. The, the Quinn property is about 20 feet lower than Greg's right. driveway. So Greg's driveway is about 125. The property line is at 106. One. So Greg's see. six foot fence at the property line goes up to 112. So that's right. The bottom of the retaining wall is 123. 
at all. Right. So it's we 10 feet like higher than the fence. Yeah. Walls, yeah. fence. So it's, you're allowed to it's put just a fence on. Now he's telling me he wants to put a fence all the way across where all that planted is. And I'm like, I don't understand what's going on. Okay. And our property value is all Those little black it's, fences it's are for my dog. Talk to you. <laughs> so this is. Sure Siri. There we go. So this is this is where we sit, and this yep. is where we. Go. Yep. It's a tough. It's a tough uh, situation because that slope is totally unusable. But now it's covered by the fence. We were planting on it and doing little things. He asked us not to do that, so we had to take everything out. He put the fence in, and yeah, then there's it's his this property, right? Yes, it is, right. and I can't do anything about that. But right. and then there's a little fence up there, and then there's going to be a wall here and a big fence here. I just uh, I, uh, one question for Greg. I mean, you say that once uh, is there a planting plan? plan? Is there a planting plan? plan? There's no planting plan. Is there the, the plan that well, trees that are coming out? What's going on? He said he's going to put, he's, oh yeah, you're going to put a fence like this kind of fence. So you got to direct it? your question to the commission. Yeah, I mean, the, the question is if, uh, in, you know, if let's say the wall, the wall gets built and this uh, extension of the, the driveway plaza where it is now, what's going to, uh, how is going to finish the edge of that particular farm? I mean, he says that he's going to move the trucks and, and vents uh, that he uh, already has there. Okay, uh, I, mean, I mean, what's the danger of uh, we've been living there the, tru the trucks come down? For uh, I mean, he's going to fence the edge of this half moon that he's building, or what like, is, is this like, is, is the fence like this going to go above the wall? Yeah, we need to put some fence because is it going to be this? So kind you have of to come. You, you can't. You got to talk to. You got to talk to the commission. You so if you're going to go. Do you, are we putting a chain link fence on top? There of has this? to be some kind of because you can imagine like this table. There was no. Edge right. like this, yeah. and you're backing up. Yeah. So you need some kind of railing or edge, or and it's going to be chain link. I don't, I don't know what it's going to look like. Uh, you'd it's have to ask Greg. You'd have to come up and explain what, what, what kind of railing fence. Or I mean, I want you to be able to turn around in your driveway, but at my expense, and at the fact that my property value goes down because there's these vans in the in like right where we sit. It just seems. I mean, I like the wall, the wall to go up because I don't want to see the, the, the backlights. We've been living there for our, almost 15 years and we see everything. Right. There's nothing we can do about it. It's right there. So, I mean. It's just, see the thing, is the, the, the wall that they're building is within the setback regulations. All right, well then. Right, so it's not in the property. So you're, you're looking over a fence into the property, into the, their setback. Um, there's a fence, a fence, and now there's going to be a wall with a fence. Right. So what, what we're going to get into is, is um, I want to see if we can get the planting plan added to this thing so it so it softens the wall. Okay, but we've also been told that he wants to extend the that existing long fence all the way to Camp Avenue, and we'd like to get a commitment that that's not going to happen as well. But he's allowed to put a fence on his property. All right. Well then. That's what he wants to my do. Then I guess I have to just to lose money on my house when I decide to sell it because it's going to look horrible. Yeah. You're allowed to put fences life. in your property. Well, that's another. I mean, the water, the, you know, it just. Can't he work with us a little bit to make it more? Yeah, you know, no, of course. Of course. Yeah. Make it make sense for somebody that that's what we look at, like literally, like it's that far away. Right. I got you. Because you're down, you're downgraded. So these are the tre these are the four trees that are coming out on here. No, the four no, that are getting protected. They're not coming out. Okay. There's a few trees that are coming out, and Greg tonight said, uh, "I will plant like ten trees." Uh, Greg, if you could come up and explain uh, a little bit about what you had in mind relative to that planting on the lower side of the wall. I know it's a sloped area. I know it's there's other vegetation that make it a little. Uh, this is how this is looks 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 right now. Uh, we're planning to cut maybe one, two, three, three trees that there are on the way, the, the wall. So um, 
So after the wall, I'm planning to plant these trees. Okay. Evergreens? Yes. Okay. Now on the bottom of the wall yeah. and on the top of the wall. Okay. How so tall? Four feet, six feet, eight feet? Um, I'm not, I didn't think about it, but usually they are growing. Did you grow? So, yeah. No, when you buy them at, at Home Depot or Lowe's, yeah, I'll no, tell you I'm going to buy them maybe like a four feet okay. trees. So uh, on the top, we need to put some fence for the safety. And I would like to plant the trees as well. Okay, like so. Four feet trees. On, on the bottom. And the fence, fence will be behind the trees. Okay, so on the downward slope, we're saving four trees. And the wall is, how long is this wall about? About uh, in the highest point? No, no, the length from the front to back. 60 feet? 60, about 60 feet. Do you think 60 feet is correct? I think. Well, I just, just go off of what the, the tree that's sure. being saved. Between the tree that's being saved and I'm going to add up the, what's it, this is the proposed retaining wall project. And the tree that's being 30. saved. It's, 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 it's under 30. Just give right. it a scale, it's not 60. Not 60? No. Yeah, so I'm, I'm I mean, if scale is, well, actually, that's 20 feet. So 20 feet. Oh, yeah, 20, 20, 40, 60. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think so. 20, right? I would like to make this place nice. So it's not it's like. Big, it's a big, it's 60. Yeah, it's 60. 50, 60. Our map is off. A little that's less than 60. 20. Yeah, okay. So. Of the wall. 60 feet. Wow. Like a very. Okay. Excuse me, you can't, please don't talk in the audience. Okay, um, so uh, on the bottom slope of the wall, how many four foot tall trees do you think you're going to put? And it, I don't necessarily think you have to put them all the way down to the southern portion, which is the bottom 20 feet. I'm more concerned with the upper half. I would like to put as much as I can. So what, every, for example, if the wall is 60 feet, so I would like to put like every two feet, three feet. I don't know what's the rules. From the start of the wall to the end of the wall. So up to three feet on center, and you're doing 60 feet, that's 30 trees. Yeah, so basically 30 feet. Too close. Too close. Yeah. Too many Too trees, close right? together, you smush. Yeah. Right, okay, yeah. so they're four feet on center, yeah. right? So say at least 10 on the bottom, 10. Give them a little room to grow. Because you also have the, you have the trees in the middle, right. and you don't want to put them. There's some other trees in there. Yeah. Right. I'm going to say 20. And how are you going to access? Please, Sorry. can you come to the podium? Well, let, me find, let me find out first. We're just going to get past us. So he said two feet outside. We said, no, that's 20. So we say 10 trees? I would say 10. Okay, so. And 10 below? No, it's just, just below. Okay. So between here and here, this section. I mean, I don't think you need trees south of this existing tree that's being saved. So it's really this portion. And that's what's visible this way. Right? So we're gonna, can you commit to 10 trees on that side on the bottom slope? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's uh, every three feet. It's the, the two up. Three feet on center. Yeah. So 60 divided by three is 20. It's about 10, 15 trees. Yeah, all right. We'll say 15 trees. Yeah. Um, at a minimum, right, 15 trees if they all fit, right? And then on the, t the, the, the wall, how, how wide is the wall again? The width of it? Uh, about uh, six feet, I think, between six and eight. So, so the, the, the fence that were, the pictures you showed, it was chain link, right? On the top of the wall, you put some kind of fencing so you don't fall over the wall. Exactly. On the top side of the wall, do you want to do trees the entire way? Yeah, I would like to put some trees there. I, I don't know if right in the same time, but uh, year after, it's depend on the budget. So the top side of the wall, you can put more trees in, yeah. but that's going to block the trap, the lights from the trucks and the cars going back and forth. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So can we put twenty on the top of the wall? Sure. All right. Are we going to put them on so the maybe, which yeah, side of the chain link fence? On the closest to the house. So it'll be chain link. So it'll be edge of wall, chain link fence, then trees, then his house. Yeah. So she'll look at the chain link fence the with trees, trees will, on the other side of it. Yeah, trees will go through it. Yeah, the trees will go through it, right? Yeah. 
So the chain link fence should be closer to the driveway, closer to the house. Well, it's, it is the property. You want to look at the chain link fence? Yeah, it's right, a I mean, choice. Uh, you get the pick. Yeah. So is is the the fencing? Is it typical the fencing is on the west on the neighbor side or closer to the driveway side? For the guardrail on top yeah. of the wall, or in the it's center, could right? go either. Usually, it's in the center. Okay, but we need, it's got to be either one way or the other if you're going to put a row of trees in front of it. Yeah. I would kind of think the trees are on the house side yeah. and the fence is on the neighbor side. Is the fence on the diagram? No. Uh, so no. You can see the trees instead of a guardrail from no. our property. Right now, that's what I'm trying to decipher. Greg, do you know what kind of fence you're going to put up there? Is it a chain link fence or is it something else? Is it a mm, railing? Is I'm it? I'm not sure yet. I was thinking it's like code for that fence. So I would like to speak. I'm sorry. With you. I I thought it's like a building code for the fence like that. So I would like to speak with you before I decide what kind of fence I can put it in. So I'm not sure yet. It could be the aluminum fence. It's got the little you know one by one pillar. Minimum high. I would like to put like three feet. Mm -hmm. So it could sense. be something uh, not visible, like, you know, I'm open for that, so, you know, I didn't decide it, but we got to put something. So maybe wires, it was safe. That would have to be part of this project. You couldn't wait another year or two to then plant yes. those trees, yes. just so you're clear. Yeah, yeah the fence is going to go in right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fence is going to go in right away. Cool. Yeah, but the fence would be easy to put it in because we got the blocks and then they can just drill the hole in the blocks, yep. concrete Drop blocks. In. We put the post, so I was thinking something like here. Right, that's so the so chain so that you so like, uh, Yeah, the, the, this property over here is in Richards Avenue. There is like 10 new houses. And nobody complained about this wall, nobody complained on the fence. So. Great, I got you. Okay. And I was curious how long it, um, the project's going to last to do? Uh, the contractor I speak uh, last year, he said about two weeks. Oh. And when are you going to start it if you get uh, approved? I have to, uh, as soon as I get the permit, I will, I'm going to call him and check the schedule with him. So it's going to probably be by, you know, starting somewhere around June, July, something like that. I'll have to start as soon as possible, but... And if you're so walled in with all these fences, how are you going to access the slope to plant all those trees? Uh, the wall, it's not going to go all the way to the fence on the left side. It's going to end up like four feet from the fence we have from the Patricia property line, about four or five feet. So we're going to make some access to the bottom of the slope so we can clean it up and do some plans on it. I honestly wouldn't really care except that that's exactly what we look at. Right, that whole thing is what we're going to be I know. You know, I know. looking at. So it, it, it's this point we're going to put 15 trees on the bottom side of the wall. But 20 there's trees. no sunlight. It's not, they're not going to live. There's 20 no. trees on the top part of the wall, right? So we're working they're all going to die. But there's four, there's four other trees that are existing today. Have you, uh, are you able to plant trees on your property? I have four inches where the, he put the fence at four inches where the wall is. So I have no leeway. I'm trying to do like vines and stuff. So, so your, I can't. Your property la line ends and then the, you have a rough the wall is, my, my original wall that was always there yeah. is there. So I, I have no leeway. But you could I plant trees no on the other side on the of that deal. rock wall. Pardon? You could plant trees. Further in on your property. Well, we did. We planted some trees. That's but what I think of course, they, we already did that. We, you know, but I, it doesn't go up high enough. Nothing will ever go up high enough. Yeah, so it's yeah, huge. I mean, uh, it's, it's a sloping street. Yeah, it's always been a sloping street. Well, it was fine for 12 years, and then all of a sudden everything changed, and right. you know, we didn't have a problem before that. So I don't know. Okay, so on top of the wall, we're going to put in 20 trees. Is that okay? I'd, I'd like to... So it's 15 plus 20 is 35 trees. Yeah, but I think we should speak with the tree designer if they're not too close, because they're, if they're too he close... He wants to consult with his landscaper. So Keep the hearing open. I All right, so. we can leave the hearing open and you can get us a planting plan yeah. from a tree guy. Yeah. 
and then we can just we can figure out if the if the support this the safety fence I'm going to call it is on the inward bound side of the of the wall which is closest to the house or the outward bound side which is closer to 51 Camp Avenue because it's either got to be on one side or the other and the trees are going to be on one side or the other okay yeah I'd like to make a comment about that as I said before that they would like to see the trees more than the fancy security fence right I got you so that's so if, you, you, if you get a landscape guide put a landscape plan in submit it to staff then becomes part of the public record then you guys can look at it and you can look at it. And as far as water is concerned, we do have tanks that the builder put under our property. So whatever water is going to come down, I don't think it's going to go to Spring Grove. That's not where that water is coming from. So it's definitely coming from the driveway and the slope coming down Camp Avenue. Okay. So. And the addition is going to be totally flat to the existing plaza, correct? Because any inclination will bring water down to the our. Property. Say that again, Filippo. The, the addition, extension the is going to be the flat. Extension is going to be totally flat. And yes. Not, uh, any maybe you know, even pitched the other way, so it doesn't have the inclination to come it, sloping down the. What what you what they're proposing is that it's flat, correct? Correct. So if you put a basketball yeah. on it, it's not going to roll all the way down the hill. They're proposing that it's flat. And I guess all the cleanup of the debris that's already there, there'll be like a cleanup job because all the debris from other construction just is sitting on the slope, just like a dump. So that, that's a blight issue. What? <laughs> so okay. I guess right, we're going to leave, we're gonna leave the application open. You're going to submit a landscaping plan, okay? With the 15 trees in the back end, wherever trees on the front end is the landscaper says, this is the size of four foot high trees, and however, it is how many feet on center they're, they're going to be. Okay? Yep. And Fred will help you with that, what you have to um, put in. Okay? So you're going to need to have, to have them draw a plan. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what day is that continuation of the hearing going to be, Fred? Is that still with that? Yeah, I'm totally fine. I would just suggest you talk with your neighbors. While you're doing a landscape plan, so that that you know, show it to them first, mm -hmm. and then show it to us. So you guys come to some sort of agreement. I mean, it's a it's a it's a difficult situation, but you know, it's it's topography. Yes. It's just, yep. Okay. What date are we talking? May 9th. Okay. Two weeks yeah. from tonight. You yeah. get us a plan in a week from now. Mm-hmm. Yep. You got it. You got a guy to talk to that can draw it up. Yep. Fantastic. And then show it to your neighbors. So the hearing will be continued to Tuesday, May 9th, 7.30 p.m. in this room. There won't be any more mailings going out. This is your notice of that meeting. So you can put whatever you plan to come up with, put a copy and stick it in your mailbox. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you. Great. Continue to May 9th. All right. Um, that's the end of the public hearing. Now we're going to move to the general meeting. It's a yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda for general meeting is business plan, um, business site plan number 94B, landfilling review application number 547, Barry Realty LLP, 18 Old Kings Highway, South and 1302 Boston Post Road. This is the um, veterinary clinic. So expand upon that. Questions, comments on this one? No. Pretty straightforward. Looks great. Okay. Staff, can you write up an approval of this application? Yep. yep. Okay, next item on here is Coastal Site Plan Review number 367A, Fudge Dam and Prevention Application number 420A, Landfilling Regrading Application number 526A, Amanda, John and Amanda Spatola at 11 Cyril's Road. This is the house that um, is. I'm going to say it's in the Tokeny neighborhood. It is. Um, is it? Yeah. Tokeny, okay, okay. It's in Tokeny. Um, where they're doing an extension to the house, they already started the kitchen renovation. It's nothing major doing the kitchen to the house. Two driveway cuts. Two and driveway cuts. In the end. Your recuse sale. became the other Texas representative. They're closing the driveway. They're keeping the driveway in the back and the garage. It's, it's a big addition to a house, but not too extensive. Any questions, comments on this one? Anything special to remember for that? The only thing that jumps off the page for me is the um, 
the attempt for the basement yeah, the blast that may or may not happen. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that there's a process to capture that with our inspection process that, that the town does. If there's a situation where, you know, it can't decided. be done, right. the inspector, I'm assuming, would catch that, right? Yeah, it's, uh, this is the one where the, the house addition is getting dangerously close to the flood line. So what we'd want to do is make sure that the applicant doesn't inadvertently, you know, you have this beautiful house and then, oh, let's just bump out the patio one more foot or the chimney or whatever, even though it's the middle of the property, all of a sudden, you, it triggers, it triggers you put yourself in the flood zone. So we want to make sure that that doesn't happen here. I know that was uh, our main concern as staff is, because oftentimes, you know, the back of your house or a side of your house, you don't even think about, hey, plenty of room. Great. We got to make sure that the final result is stays out of the flood zone. So they, they, and they figure out one point in time if they hit ledge rock and it's feasible yeah. or not feasible yeah. to build a basement. Yeah. Right. Amy, you're also talking about the sort of inundation of water and the flooding of the basement area as well. Is just, that, is that what we mean? Just I remember, um, uh, was it Connecticut Deep said that they highly, even though it's not um, prohibited, they highly recommend against it. Was the, was, the, was, yeah. the, was the comment that came off, and they clearly said that you know between the ledge and potential water table, they may or may not be able to get it, but that they were going to try. So my only question was to staff was, um, I'm assuming if there was some situation that presented on site during construction, an inspector would be able would uh, would come upon that. I mean, they're going to make the decision if they can or cannot build yeah. the basement. Yeah. So if they made a decision that makes no sense to build it, then they don't build it. Yeah, then it's, yeah, I mean, that's, so. Um, that, that was the only thing that I recall that mm -hmm. would be a concern of the We, we would need to approve hammering, though, as a condition, because they'll need to hammer that out. You, you approve hammering, what we usually hold back on is the blast. Definitely, yeah, but I'm just saying for this one, we have to have some hammering, which they may not use. Correct. But we can't say no hammering because right. then they definitely can't do the basement because the hammering is needed yeah for basement yeah. assuming yeah. based on the giant rock that's yeah <laughs> to the side they're definitely yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a big rock they're assuming definitely that, hammering that, that iceberg goes somewhere yeah okay so approval was subject to we'll okay. get started on that thank you okay um chairman's reports there's no chairman's report tonight is there a director's report no the only report uh that fred and i want to run by you is more related to scheduling uh, for May. We're scheduled to meet next week, which is May 2nd, which was going to be the continuation of 7th Sedgwick. They, Bob Maslin's agreed to continue that to later in May uh, to give him time to go to the Airbnb. Right. So there's really no business for next week. So our inclination was to cancel next week, but due to the volume of applications, at a meeting at the end of the month, what we were looking at the possibility of is Tuesday, May 30th, which is the day after Memorial Day. But we wanted to talk to you guys first to see if that was something you're comfortable with. If not, we'll rearrange the schedule. I really keep May 2nd. Previously announced, I'm out the 16th. George is out the 16th. Got it. Yeah. I'd rather keep May 2nd and, and keep off. We don't have anything off. We don't have anything to do. Is anybody, is anybody else coming back that we've punted for tonight? Yeah, there, there's nothing to do on May 2nd, really. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> can't we, we can get here and have a beer. Well, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, do, I was going to bring that up after the fact, but. Um, okay. So, so May 2nd's canceled. So May 2nd will be canceled. May 16th will be, a, uh, I think we might have one hearing, maybe. If not, it'll be a general meeting covering a number of topics. The team might show up to talk about uh, a number of items. We'll have two draft resolutions, two or three sets of minutes. That'll be May 9th. And then and when was 95 um, Long Night Point going to come back? Oh, 95 Long Night Point isn't probably going to come back till June. We have uh, three pretty significant items for May 23rd. So May 23rd is a very full night. And then we're starting to push people to June 6th. So we were looking to add either on the 16th or the 30th or 30th of June? May. Of May. Oh, okay. Or just meet every week in June. Okay, what uh, are we looking? What are we looking at May 9th? What's on May 9th? Is a special day? Uh, might be one public hearing. Okay, 142 near water. And as I said, it would be a general meeting. We're going to talk about accessory apartments. We'll talk a little bit about the design business zone. We'll have 
two or three draft resolutions, two Perfect. or three sets of minutes. It won't be a very long night. So maybe not that simple. Okay. Um, so the, the question I think to us is, can we add a meeting on May 30th? Or even later that week or another night that week? I think it's fine. It's 20, I might be out the 23rd. Okay. 50 now, but the 30th is fine. So add a meeting May 30th. Okay. Just wanted to get clarification before we start. If we need it. Okay. Okay. All right. Next meeting we talked about that. Good. Any other business? Nope. Nope. Uh, Much to adjourn. Read by Mike. Seconded by Adam. I can second it. I want to stay. <laughs> I need a second. Uh, yes. Boys, mix a second. Yes, yes. All in favor? Yes. I vote. Done. Okay. Thank Channel you, TV 79. Well done, TV 79.